we're live. I think I'm randomly staring at, well, kind of close to the computer screen for the last few seconds. That's not awkward at all. Let's see if we've got audio. We do, I think. Let me refresh this really quick. And maybe play. Oh, do I have to actually hit play? <laughs> Uh, hold on one second. Let me make sure this has caught up. Um, I already hit record. Thank you, guys. Yep, there's audio. Okay, that is a huge delay. I'm going to actually refresh this one more time. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, I mean, there's always a delay. A, de a delay. Wow. I can't talk um, on live streams, but that one seems to be pretty severe. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Looks like we're ready to go. I've been so excited to start on this. Um, I This is the part of the painting I've been most interested in. So the lion isn't really done done. He's mostly done. I've got some more work to go on him, but I know I'm going to have starfish sticking on him and some other things, so I didn't want to spend too much time like perfecting anywhere I was just going to cover later anyway. But for tonight, I'm going to start on some little um, corals. I'm going to use, I'm using a general, <laughs> my broken pencil, like this thing is probably 15 years old. I remember shutting it in my truck door and I haven't had that truck door or truck in like 10 years. So that is an old pencil that I really need to replace, but I can't find any other ones right now. So I'm just going to make little circles of about where I want this specific one to go. Actually, I kind of want it to come, let's mark off, well, see now I've got to watch on this, that is too formed. I don't want it to just look like an ear. Maybe we'll pull it down a little. I'm trying to decide here. So this is one of the challenges that you run into when you're working like this, where you're doing something that's just weird and you're not really copying a reference photo. You've got to keep in mind that it, depending on that shape, it was almost going to look like a weird ear in a weird location. So maybe I won't do it quite that big. I can add more if I want to later on. And I don't want to just line half his face. So I'm going to remove part of that. So we'll sketch some of this in. Thanks, Tamara. Hi, Caitlin. Okay. Now I'm not gonna put all the detail with this. And actually I think I'm gonna pull some of these out to help with the whole ear weirdness there. I'm gonna pull some of these out behind his ear and then I'll have another coral sticking up along that. Okay, I'm liking that idea better, but I want some of these to be a bit bigger. I'm definitely too small on these. That'll work. I'll have a few going up behind the ear. Okay, so that pencil that I'm using there, it's just a General's charcoal white pencil, or it's a, a charcoal pencil. And so it erases completely. It won't leave, like you don't wanna use a regular graphite pencil when you're working in acrylics like this because that graphite will usually show through some of your more translucent layers. So by doing it this way, I avoid that problem altogether. And I actually may make these, you know what? I'm gonna make these even bigger. I'm gonna erase that. I mean, I have an idea of where I want it to go and see how awesome this pencil is. I changed my mind, threw my eraser on the floor and I can completely adjust that. But this is why I wanted to kind of sketch it out first before I started painting just the general location because if I would have started painting, it would have been a hard, lot harder to change that. So I want these circles, they're actually gonna be a lot bigger. Okay, we'll just start with that for now, and then I'll pull some more behind the ear as we go. Okay, um, let's see. Samantha said, I've been watching some of your older videos and have been binging your content. It's so inspiring, helping me to start painting and drawing after years. Thank you so much. That's awesome to hear, Samantha. What are those circles things that I have drawn? Circle things, I don't know. I'm gonna call that the technical term. I don't remember the actual name. I used to be, I used to keep reef or saltwater fish and I had a reef tank and I used to know the names of so many things. I don't remember if these are polyps. I think these are polyps, but I don't remember. Honestly, it's been so many years. I don't remember half of anything I used to know. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get a base of the center and this actually, this blue is not opaque enough. So what I'm going to do is pull some white. I'm going to actually make my own blue a little bit here. So that's phthalo blue. Pull some white into that because this is going to be more opaque than that was. 
Actually, this is kind of a better color. I'm going to warm it up just a bit with some green. There we go. That should, yeah, see how much more that fills in. And I'll be able to put highlights and shadows from there. So I'm just going to get a base. I don't care if these, these don't need to be perfect circles. If I needed perfect circles, I would use a stencil. I am not one for painting perfect, for painting or drawing perfect circles at all. But at, like if you, if you looked at in person, half of my paintings where I've done space scenes, they're, all of the planets are the size of my dishes or CDs. Like I have to find something in my house that's perfectly round and trace it. So yeah, there's, um, the one on my wall over there is a small little plate. But yeah, I just, I have to trace it, find circle things in my house to trace. So these will have so much detail. And so you're going to get an idea when you do something like this, how long it takes. So the first, it's really easy too when you're doing something that you're planning to put a lot of detail for it to look absolutely terrible. And it's kind of scary because it's like, well, that doesn't look at all like what I, I'm looking for you know, what I'm going for. But those first layers are always going to be kind of awkward, kind of ugly. That's normal. Don't let it discourage you. Just keep painting and keep layering until it looks good. Okay. That's good for now. So like right now, that looks ridiculous. I'm going somewhere with it though. I need that to dry first. So let me see. Thanks, Marcel. Um... Janice said, got my first set of graphy tints, the 24 set, and I'm playing with them while watching. Love the feet, feel of them. Very much like regular graphite. Yeah, they're awesome. Wait till you add water. Oh my gosh, they're so much fun. I love those. It's so funny because I liked the graphy tint. The first time I used them, I liked them. I had fun with them. But I wasn't like super, super excited until I used those extra large blocks and did some other stuff with, oh my gosh, now I'm like, I can't wait to use those again. Those are super fun. Okay, plug your ears. I don't want to sit here all night waiting for this to dry, so I'm going to use the hair dryer. Now, much like, like last week, if you watched that where I was working on the inside of the mouth, I'm going to start out by just loosely blocking things in. I don't need things to be completely perfect. And actually, this is a little, hold on, I'm going to reposition position this easel a little bit because, and hopefully I don't knock anything out because the lights are too close. Let me see if that worked. And adjust the camera. Oh, yeah, you can way see that better now. Oh doesn't like it when I change. Hold on. Give me a second. I'm going to see if I can make this a little bit better for you guys because it looks like that blue is so washed out. Got to balance making it better so that you can see, but so that I can still see what I'm doing. Um, it's a little better. It's not amazing. It seemed to like it better at this angle. No, it didn't. Hold on, I think it's doing auto white balance. Give me one second. Um, I'm trying to make this as accurate for you guys is what I'm seeing. These aren't the greatest webcams. Um, I feel like it's overexposing those. Too much. Okay, that isn't. One second, sorry. I know this is super boring. I'm just trying to, I don't think this is helping that much. Okay, that kind of helps. Let's, let's go with that for now. That's a little better. Okay. Um, let's see. Babson Draws said, I tried to paint butterflies today and it was hard. Seriously, butterflies are, you? they seem like they're super easy, but there's so much detail. They look so much better if you like take the time and put all that detail in there. Um, they're way more time consuming than, than you think. Okay. Probably just going to use a liner brush. Not sure if I should use a liner or a round for this. Let's find out. Okay, so the stems on these, let's 
go ahead and get the centers blocked in. Let's go actually back to the round for that. So the centers on these are kind of this brownish orange color. Now that there's a hair on my palette, seriously, um, go away hair. Um, the centers are kind of a brownish orange. Now the orange itself, if I mix an orange, the colors that I typically am going to use to mix orange, extremely transparent. So I'm gonna use some unbleached titanium white, mix a bit of that in there and it's gonna lighten it up, which actually is pretty close to the color I want. Now, I don't really care too much if my color is perfect. I'm just, like I, I did on the teeth last, last week, just getting a general locate. Yeah, this is gonna be super dull. So I'll come back through with that later on and fix that that color up. I'll put a couple of layers there. Actually, we can brighten it up just a bit now. Shading in the Heart said, I wanted to thank you for the vlog regarding when to start teaching. I just had held my fourth casual paint along event last night and I'm growing so much artistically as I teach other. That's awesome to hear. Good job. Gail said, could you please say hello to my sons, Devin and Jonah? They're watching the live stream with me. Hi, Devin and Jonah. Are you guys painting tonight? Who all while you're watching tonight is painting or drawing? Should at least work on a sketchbook. Something. Thanks, Mara. She said, are you going to start putting the sea creature thingies in his mane to make him look like Medusa, sort of? No, I definitely don't want him to look like Medusa. So I've gotta be careful with the, the shape uh, of what I end up putting in there. And like right now, everything's super bright. These aren't gonna stay that bright. I, whoops, I just dipped that in the yellow into the blue that is going to make green i do not want that rinse that brush out but i don't want um i don't want it to look like i was going to put the anemone but if i put two I, i'm going to put some but not too much because he would look like they're if they're too long and thin he will start looking like medusa and i really oh too bright really didn't want that so the nice thing is because i'm working in acrylics it's just easy to cover up so if something doesn't come out quite how i wanted no big deal paint over it so i, I really get to experiment a lot as i work on this Oh, he was supposed to have one come out on his face right there. Oh, maybe not, we'll see. And I can better define the edges and stuff. Like right now things are really messy. That's totally okay for this. Caitlin says, I got the Inktense blocks and had made some pretty backgrounds. I would like to draw with my colored pencils on top. It scared the lighter colors won't show over the dark Inktense. They kind of will. They kind of will. The colored pencils don't stick that great to Inktense. Some do like the, I found that the luminance stuck the best of the ones that I tried. They're, it depends on how you've laid the Inktense down and the type of paper you use. Like there's so many factors in that. So do a test, um, on some, a scratch piece of paper, the same kind of paper, but do a little test there before you get onto your main project. Pablo said, hey Lisa, not all my Prismacolors are light fast. I want to add in some Derwent light fast to get a broader range of usable colors. What do you recommend I get? Good luck today. <laughs> Thanks. Um, definitely the purples of the Derwent light fast. Their purples are my favorites. Um, any of those, they've got like a nightshade color. I forget all of the names, but their purples are amazing. So that would be my, my for a suggestion there if you're just gonna get a few. I mean, all the colors are good, but you get in the light fast set, there's a lot of like um, like grays and very neutral colors, but man, those purples are so amazing. Michelle said, you, you may also be having color differences in the camera balance due to what bulbs you're using in the light. Some, oh, absolutely. Some go slightly green or pink on camera. Yeah, that is so true. Like this, these lights I love. I think I have them listed in the video description. They're amazing because I see things so accurately. Like they really, this color is way too light, but that's okay. I need something to be opaque enough to cover up what I'm doing. They, it looks so good in person, but on camera, not as much. Luckily, if it's if it's something I'm, I'm editing, I'm able to go through and adjust the color balance um, on the completed videos, but on live streams and not so much. I really don't have a whole lot of control with the programs that I'm using and the cameras. These almost look like little flowers. They actually look a lot like little flowers. Pops and Draw says it's 10 a.m. here in Singapore and that just scrolled too far. Um, I just woke up to watch your live stream. 10 a.m. is early for me. Wow, you are dedicated. Lynn said, I'm painting with oils. Awesome. I love the smell of oils. They make me so happy. Sula said, I'm practicing those teeth. Nice. 
Sarah said, I love I love to paint and draw during the live stream, but unfortunately I don't have a place to set my easel. It's not in front of the computer. Oh no. Use a sketchbook. Like a light little sketchbook. Um, let's see. Tamara said, since I'm working on a portrait, I need a break from skin tones. <laughs> Portraits are nerve wracking. Oh, you are so right. I actually, I think, didn't you just post that on Instagram, Tamara? It is amazing. Like, oh my gosh, it looks so good. She's been, Tamara's been doing stuff with airbrushing for the soft backgrounds. And she's working on a portrait right now. And the depth that she's getting that way, oh my gosh, it looks so good. So, so good. You should go follow her. I don't know. Do you have on your channel? I don't know if you even have. I haven't looked. Do you have a channel here tomorrow? I should know this. Um, Because link your Instagram for people. Um, so they can see what the heck I'm talking about. Um, let's see. Chelsea said, not drawing or painting tonight. Wood burning on a cutting board. Nice. As a Christmas gift. Recipe on the board for granny. She'll be, she'll happy cry. That is so cool. Hillary said, doodling in Strathmore sketchbook. I have a lot of Strathmore sketchbooks. So these, I need to make the ends of them a little bit thicker. See, these are going to be super ugly. Now, if you are working on something like this at any point, and it's got so much detail, and it starts getting to where it's like, oh my gosh, I'm just totally overwhelmed with the amount of detail I need to put in this, work on one little, like, flower, they're not flowers, but flower-like shape at a time instead of everything like I'm doing here. I'm just, again, blocking things out. But if it does start to get overwhelming, don't feel like you can't just work on one. Like you don't have to, to do everything with that, like how right now I'm just taking this color and putting it everywhere that I'm gonna need it. You don't have to work that way. Break it, break it down and work on smaller sections. Maya said, I've been going through your previous videos on Patreon. I've learned so much from you. Thank you. You are an inspiration. Thank you. I just updated. I didn't realize I was missing a few videos over on, pa not on Patreon. I mean, they're on Patreon, but on my video library. So I just updated a bunch of that last night or those last night. This is going to have so much tiny detail. I'm going to have to like focus on later. I think I'm just going to use this color and put another layer on it now. Just to brighten that up. And that blue is not going to stay that bright. That's all going to be shaded and so much stuff. Shading of the Heart said, have you used any of the acrylic in interference colors? I don't know what that is. So no. I have not. Sarah said, right before the live stream started, I started my first painting on a nature core board. Oh, let me know how you like those. I love how smooth those are. I wish they came better, bigger. You can get them up to an 18, uh, what is it? A 18 by 24, I believe, which is a decent size, but they're so nice. I always want to work, like, I want bigger versions of those. So every little thing that I'm putting in here, every little line is going to have to have shading on it. Because if I leave it flat like this, and this is one of the mistakes that I used to make a lot when I first started painting, is when I first started painting, I was only interested in marine life. So I did stuff like this a lot. And I expected, like, you just mix the, the color, you get the right color, you put it in the right place, and ta-da, it's done. No, that looks terrible. It looks like a cartoon. I mean, what I'm doing right now looks super cartoony. This doesn't look like anything. You have to shade and add all those little, it's not just about details either. I was missing detail and I was missing shading. You've got to do both in order to make things look more realistic. Get those values in there. Your dark's dark enough, light's light enough. Like I'm always saying, those that is really going to make a big difference in how realistic your work looks. Assuming realism is what you're going for. Nothing wrong if it's not, just make sure that it's, if it doesn't look realistic, it needs to be because you chose for it not to look realistic, not because you can't make it look realistic. That was something I saw a lot with, mostly teenagers would come in and they would do the whole, it's just my style. And it's like, it, it would turn out when you talk to them more, it was just that they didn't know how to make things look realistic. It wasn't that they didn't want to. Some of them didn't want to. Some were only interested in abstract and that's totally fine. But it was surprising how often they really did want to do more. They just didn't know how. So they, they limited themselves by going, I don't know how, so this is just how I paint. Don't limit yourself. If you want to paint realism, learn how to paint realism. Again, nothing wrong with painting abstract, if that's your choice. But it always surprised me how many limited themselves. They wanted to do, do realism too, and they just didn't really try because they figured they couldn't until I showed them. 
Gail said, interference painting, paint is a color shifting, uses light to change the color a bit. They are awesome. Would look great with your fantasy work. I don't know if I'd enjoy that or not. Maybe. I think I'd have more fun like playing with it. But as far as what the finished painting comes out like, I think I'm too controlling. I don't know. I think that might bug me. I'll have to look into that though. It's possible what I'm imagining is not what you're actually explaining. Okay, so like right now, not a whole lot of paint is coming off on my brush. It tells me I need more water and more paint. So I'm gonna mix a little bit more of this color. Like nothing is happening when I touch, even when I reload it, I definitely need more paint and water. There we go. And believe it or not, these little marks that I'm putting here, they're eventually gonna be green for the most part, like a bright, bright green. But I've got bits of this bright, well not this brown, it'll actually be a different brown that are gonna show through. So I'm just kind of starting with this mid range and then I can adjust the colors from there. If you guys have a question, make sure that you do the highlighted, the Atlock Prefine Art. If it doesn't come up orange, like that highlighted orange, I won't see it. So it's not that I'm trying to ignore people. I've had people accuse me of that before. You only answer people if they pay you. Like, what are you talking about? That has never been how that works. Vladimir said, I know you've tried the Permalba Titanium White and Black. Have you used the other oil paints made by Permalba besides the White and Black? Any thoughts? I have. I hate them because they smell horrible. I don't know what it was about the colors that they chose or what it was. I had a pack that I got. Um, it had green, yellow. I still have it here. Like green, yellow, blue, and red, I think. And oh my God, I don't know what, why, oh my gosh, the smell was so, and I mean, I'm used to oil painting. I like the smell of oils, but those ones smelled so bad that I really didn't give them too much of a chance. I used them on a couple of paintings. Performance-wise, they were super, um, like the, the texture was great. There were, I think the colors I had were more opaque, if I'm remembering correctly. It's been years, so I could have that wrong. But this, I just remember the smell being so bad. I'm like, I can't do this. That I don't know what it was about those colors. And I don't know if that's like typical of them or if it was just the ones I had in that set. I don't know. I think it was a five pack. But yeah, those smelled horrible. Michelle said, your light is 65K, which is very blue. Leave filters, colors, Leaf filters, color corrector gels to warm it up a bit could save editing time. Sorry, my new hair is showing. Well, actually the editing time, it doesn't add much to it anymore because I'm using Premiere Pro or Adobe Premiere Pro. And it's like a one button thing. I just drag it over a little nested sequence and it adjusts to exactly, um, I make it match the, the actual photo, which I, I make sure is accurate. But I wonder if any of that would work on the, for the webcams, if there was something I could like tape over them or I don't know. These are not long enough. And as long as this is taking me to paint, it's actually when you're, you get on a roll when you're not, you know, sitting and chatting on a live stream, it does go a lot faster. It's not quite this slow. Clary said, what do you consider photorealism versus hyperrealism? Or a piece that looks very realistic, but you can still tell it's an artwork. If you can tell that it's not a high, like if you look at something and it looks like a high def pho photograph, that's hyperrealism. If you look at something and you can tell it's not a photograph, that's photorealism. To, that's like kind of my, my defining thing. And a lot of people claim their work is, is hyperrealistic and it's not. If it doesn't look like a high def photo where you, you, if you can at all look at it and go, oh, I see your brush strokes. Oh, I can tell that's a painting. That doesn't mean it's bad. It just means it's not, that's not hyper-realism. Even if you're, that didn't come out right at all. I had like weird places I put emphasis on that word. But you, even if your goal is hyper-realism, that's like one of the only styles that really, I'll see people say, this is hyper-realism. Okay, that was your goal, but that wasn't the outcome. So um, yeah, if you can tell that it's a painting, it's not hyper-realism. It, that's pretty much how I, I define it myself. I'm sure other people, well, the artists who are claiming their work that's not hyperrealism as being hyperrealism may argue with that, but I mean, that's what photorealism. Photorealism is where you look at it and it looks like a photo and you have to look closer to realize, okay, it's a painting, you could, but you can tell it's a painting. If you can tell it's a painting, it's not hyperrealism. 
Um, Caitlin said, I like the golden fluid acrylics, bought the black, white, but holy crap, the price. Have you ever used those? I have the basics too, but they seem a little thick sometimes. I have the High Flow by Goldens, the one for airbrushing. That's all, all I've got. I don't know if I've got the other ones. I actually want to try some of their other acrylics. The problem with theirs is that they tend to have more of a gloss to it, so I would have to mix matte medium to dull it up, which may be worth, I, I mean, I'm not sure because um, I know they've got a good selection of colors, so I do want to try some of the Goldens, just knowing how much I love their airbrush paint. But I, I've only tried a, few, a handful of them, not enough to really give a big opinion on it. I know that the texture and consistency was nice, but because they had a high gloss, it really didn't work for how I paint. I really like the matte finish of the Liquitex Basics, which is why I use those. Valerie said, the Logitech Brio webcam has a lot more user control options. Isn't that the one you linked me before? I don't have the money for it right now. Right now, all my money goes to vet bills and taxes. Um, my, yeah, lots of vet bills right now. Uh, Echo has to go in. Her quote for Monday surgery is $1,200. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not buying anything for a while. Um, but yeah, that's on my list of things I want to upgrade for sure. Fiddle Jewel says, do you have any, have any panda bear photos you could share with us sometime? Nope, I have not had any panda bears anywhere near me in any of the zoos I've been to. I, it's not something I've ever gotten to see, so unfortunately, no. There are some, though, if you go over to Wildlife Reference Photos, they do have some photographers who have posted some there. And there may be some on Pixabay, I'm not sure. I haven't looked. Um, Lumen Prabio said, what do you mean by highlight, highlight writing? There's the, yeah, what you just did there. That's the highlighted. Yeah, the, the highlight that you have in orange, that's all I need to see to, to see it. Jenna said, I saw an African hyper-realistic artist standing next to a life-size portrait she did, and it looked like a picture of two people standing next to each other. Amazing. See, that is hyper-realism. Adit said, uh, Gupu paper, any suggestions on using it with watercolors? No, I don't like it for watercolor. I did it once with watercolor for a smart art box project. It was kind of fun, but I would not choose to do that again. Um, Yupo is great. The thing that I use Yupo paper for is when I'm using the Winsor & Newton pigment markers. That's the only use I found for Yupo, and for that, it's perfect. It's absolutely wonderful, but not for watercolor, not at all. You're painting on plastic. It doesn't absorb into it the like what watercolor would, so you can't use your your general like traditional watercolor techniques on that paper really good for Windsor newton pigment markers though gail said sorry about echo sending more positive healing energy to echo i'm spending a lot of vet bills right now yeah echo should be thank you and echo should be fine she needs a dental she's got more teeth that need to be pulled she's had it done last year or two so that dog has the worst teeth but she's got another dental and she's got a lump that needs to be removed and biopsied so that's what echo's going in for she should be totally fine though i'm, I'm not super worried about her the other one that was really sick, Jessie, she's responding really well to the steroids. So it looks like hers actually isn't cancer. Most likely it turns out to be an autoimmune disorder that is causing her body to destroy red blood cells. But the she's responding so well to the medication that we think she's going to be hopefully okay for a while longer. So we were pretty excited to, to get the blood work back on Monday. We were just at the vet again. Um, I think I live there now the good vet, not the crappy one I told you guys about a couple weeks ago or a few weeks ago. But she, yeah, she's doing really like, I think even the vet was surprised with the results on her lab work or blood work that we got, did on Monday. Her red blood count like more than doubled from what it was uh, two, two or three weeks before. We didn't think she was going to live. So we're really, really happy about how she's doing. She definitely feels a lot better. Um, Let's see. Marilyn said, ordered my Grex Genesis airbrush combo kit. Yay. Oh my gosh, you're going to have so much fun. I'm excited for you. I'm actually going to be using my Grex. I've got it sitting here. I'm going to be using that for, for softening certain things as I move on around the lion. And I, I know I'll end up using it a bit more on this. I love that airbrush so much. Valerie, oops, that scrolled too far. Valerie said, yep, that's the one. I feel you. We just pay it finished paying off our dog's surgery from last November. That emergency surgery ended up being 2100 Ouch. Yeah, they get expensive, don't they? Clary said, how much is Adobe Premiere and does it include Photoshop? So I am doing, you can buy like certain individual packages with the Premiere or with Adobe. I'm using the, or because I have Premiere Lite, or 
I can't talk. I have Photoshop, Lightroom, like I have their whole pack. I've got their, their audio recording thing. It ends up being almost 60 bucks a month. It is expensive. So if you're using Premiere, um, I mean, if you're doing a lot of video editing, it's absolutely worth it. I love it. But when I first started making videos, I wasn't making enough to justify spending that much on a video editor. Um, I was able to learn what I needed. I used, what was it? Um, PowerDirector. Uh, Power Director 16 is the one that I currently have. But that one, that honestly got me through and it was so much more affordable than Adobe. So, but now that I do so many videos and actually I'm making money from the, the videos, it made sense to go ahead and upgrade to that. But yeah, it's like, I want to say it's like 58 after taxes. It's almost $60 a month for, if you're a student, you get a bit a discount. But for, if you're not, it is crazy expensive, but that includes Lightroom, Photoshop, um, Adobe Audition, which is a audio, like a professional sounding or audio um, editor. So like for me, being a violinist, recording music, I can use that. Um, Premiere Pro, a few other things that I don't really have any interest in. It actually, it comes, it's their whole suite that comes with everything, every, um, what's it called? Every thing they have. I want to say every package they have. That's not it. Every whatever, every program, that's the word, every program that they have is that, but it's, it's an investment. If you aren't going to like use it all the time, then it's probably not worth it for most. Um, at least get the Premiere. I really love the Photoshop and the Lightroom. That's like $10 a month. That's an absolute for me must have, but the other ones, um, that, that's quite expensive. Um, Tamara said, so very glad to hear about Jesse. Great news. Gail said, wonderful news. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I'm super happy. I wasn't expecting her. Like, we didn't think she was going to live. We thought that was it. But um, if it's autoimmune, that can be maintained with medication for quite some time. So we get more time with her. So we were really happy. Hopefully that lasts, or, you know, hopefully it keeps up. Pablo said, what do you need to consider when looking for a print-on-demand service? Any experience with imprint? No, not with imprint. I use, um, um, Fine Art America is the one that I've been using. I don't really have any advice other than, I mean, I, it works. I haven't had any complaints. And the nice thing with, with doing the print on demand things is I don't have to invest a bunch of money or store the prints before they sell. So that for me was kind of a big deal. Um, storage space is extremely limited. I'm in a two bedroom apartment and the master bedroom is my studio. Uh, so I'm like, there's not a lot of room here. Um, so print on demand worked great for that, but Fine Art America has been good. The thing you've got to watch with with a lot of the print on demand, people seem to be under the impression that you put the prints on there and it's going to be like eBay. People are just going to start buying it. They'll see it there and they'll buy it. No, that it really doesn't work that way. You really only get sales if people know who you are and you're advertising elsewhere. So like advertisements on my website, advertising on social media, advertising somewhere so people know you've got those prints, but they're not gonna like just go to Fine Art America and find you. I mean, technically they can, but realistically that pretty much never happens. Very rarely is that how, how someone is going to find you or buy prints. So you still have to advertise it just like if you were printing yourself and let people know that, that that's something that you have available. This looks like the cheesiest crappiest painted flowers that like I would have painted when I was five year old, years old right now. When you get to these stages where it looks absolutely terrible, it's normal. Don't let it frustrate you. Just keep painting till it looks good. Uh, Michelle says light lighting gels are basically thin plastic gels you can tape right onto the light. I'll send you some links and info on Instagram. Thanks. Perfect. Whoops. Let's scroll too far. Um, Lumen said, I was at the Luck Refiner website recently. I saw all the merchandise for sale. I was super excited. I could buy a poster of Lisa's work now without paying hundreds of dollars for the actual portrait. Yeah, and that's the thing that I like so much about prints is not everybody has the money to buy the original. When you have the prints, that that gives the everybody the option. You know, it's a lot less money. So um, it should fit a wider range of budgets, that's for sure. I probably should tell people more often that I have prints. I actually need to update and put a lot of new prints in there too. Yeah, I like Fine Art America too because they've got a thing you can embed it into the WordPress website. So it's like I've got my whole shop there on my website. You don't have to go straight to Fine Art America in order to see what prints I have. So that's pretty cool. 
And for me, that was a big must. And a lot of websites do stuff like that. But that's a big must um, because I can embed it that way. Very easily, too. Marilyn said, sorry to hear I still have a $2,000 vet bill uh, to VCA for my turbo with diabetes that is now passed away. I'm so sorry. I know these pets, as they get older, sure get expensive. I mean, worth it, but expensive. Um, we just have to deal with my lesser than webcams for a bit. Um, Maya said, do you think Arches paper for colored pencil, specifically the, what do you think of Arches paper for colored pencil, specifically the blocks? I love them. Now here's the thing with the blocks. The blocks are extremely con expensive and I'm not sure you need them for colored pencil. Like the blocks, I've used them for colored pencil. I've done the reviews on them. I'm going to make some of these a little bit longer. So, I mean, I love them, but at the same time, the blocks cost a lot more than if I just buy the individual sheets of Arches and then cut them to the size that I want for colored pencil. I'm going to save my blocks now for my water media, my my uh, ink tents, my watercolor pencils, and my, um, let's see, what is it, graphite tint and water-soluble graphite is what I'm going to save that for. Love the blocks. Works great with colored pencil, but like I said, you're paying a little bit more, I think, for, uh, maybe you're not paying more, it's just expensive because you're getting 20 sheets, but those are expensive. So as awesome as they are, I'm going to use them for my water media because the regular arches paper is just fine for colored pencil. They're like, you don't need colored pencil to be in a block. There's no real benefit to it being in a block other than that it's just good paper. Caitlin said, update, this bird, OMG, she steps up for food and occasionally, but will bite you without warning and then don't get her when she doesn't get her way, talks your head off. Definitely a five-year-old. Help me out. <laughs> um, yeah, just patience on that. That's Chicken does that too. When Chicken has to go in his cage, when he knows it's bedtime, oh, Chicken gets unhappy. I can put him in his cage, but if my husband tries to take him for me to put him in, he will try to bite him. Uh, which is funny because Chicken's such a sweet bird, but yeah, he doesn't get his way. That's just birds. I mean, birds bite even at the best like the best trained bird you always have to be prepared for that so you get to where you kind of I think read you can know when they're going to be in one of those moods to try to avoid it as much as possible I mean we we have a tendency to forget too with birds birds aren't domesticated animals birds are exactly what they were in the wild we've not tamed them other than you know raising them to be used to us and such but we have to expect that they are still technically a wild you know well not wild wild animal but they're i mean they are what would be found in nature we've tamed each individual bird but they still have their same instincts and they still have like I mean, the way that a bird would treat another bird when they're unhappy is to bite them. Or, you know, that's they'll do warning bites, hopefully. So while you can train, some birds will be easier to train that out of. It's one of those things that you just kind of have to expect with a lot of them. Like Nugget, our parrot, like, he doesn't bite ever. Nothing at all. He'll, he'll ram his beak into you to tell you he's unhappy, but it, he doesn't bite. So, I mean, you'll get different things from different birds. Um, I know somebody's going to go, my bird doesn't bite. Well, yeah, some don't. But I think we have to, when you have a bird, you have to expect that that may just be how that bird is going to communicate to, with you and be patient. And for me, I try to avoid it with chicken. Um, like when I know he's going to be in a mood, you can kind of tell when they start getting um, attitude. That's when it's time for him to go to bed or go take a break in his cage. Or, you know, you, you can kind of see it coming once you, you're, you're with them all the time. But yeah, birds mean lots of patience. We used to, I used to work at a pet store. People would come in and want to know what kind of bird would be just right for their child. Um, a dead one or a stuffed one? stuffed animal I, I mean not all I would not yes yeah, some kids do great with birds but so often you'd have these parents their kids are out of control like this kid no you should not that's not the best bird they because they do bite and then the kids freak out and try to hit the bird or whatever which doesn't yeah all kinds of problems there but I always laughed when people said that and it's like Eric would come in wanting a bird for their kid and it's like that's not really a, a good pet birds are like so complex and their behaviors and um, while well, they can, I mean, I had birds as kids, it, it was fine for me. Some kids do great with them, but I'll, yeah, not all of them, that's for sure. Birds are, they, they've got a lot of behaviors that you just have to learn to work around, work with. I don't know, I don't know how helpful that is. Patience, I guess, is the answer. Them and spend more time. The more time you can spend with them, definitely the better. 
And if you go through periods where you're like, I'm just sick of them and I'm not going to spend time with them, you know, I'm just going to leave them in the cage for, or maybe you went on vacation for two weeks and had someone babysitting. You will have a lot of birds if they weren't super friendly to begin with. They will, it's not uncommon for them to kind of revert on their behavior and have to, you have to kind of back up a few steps and get them used to you again. So the more you can hold them the, or, you know, handle them, the better. Unless they're in a mood and they just need a break. Um, Vladimir, and these are just generalized advice things on birds because not all birds are going to be the same. Some birds are going to do better with a totally different approach. So, I mean, it, it's hard to give too much advice without like being there with that specific bird and, and seeing how that, yeah. Um, Vladimir said, what is your favorite oils on Dick Flick or Jerry's? I really want to try a caravan. I've not tried those from Jerry's, but just spent a lot on Black Friday. Did you spend anything on Black Friday? Um, for the oils, I right now, I know I mostly use currently the Windsor & Newton just because they're super easy. Like I can get them at any art supply store locally. Um, the Wins With the Windsor & Newton, I like the artist's brand better than the Winton color it is like their lower model, lower lower brand. I don't know. They're not quite as nice. They're a little bit hard. Like you have to thin them more with, with the linseed oil or liquid in my case um, to really get them to do what you want. But they, the artist color I really like, I really like Grumbacher too. Like really like the consistency of their, those paints. Those are so nice. So that may be one to look into, but those are the only ones I've really spent much time. I've got some other ones, same company by Golden, um, cause they sent me a sample of some of them and those ones were really nice too. I haven't played too much with them though. Okay. So I don't know how helpful that is. Um, the Grumbacher is great, great though. I definitely want to pick up more of those myself. Um, and did I buy any, spend anything on Black Friday? Okay, so that's actually funny. I thought my dog was dying. And so we knew, my husband and I, like I have to have plans for everything. And I knew that when it came time to get a new dog, I wanted big dogs. And so we decided we're gonna go with a Greyhound um, for our next dog. So or go through the, where you um, adopt one through the, the retired racers. Um, and let's see, what do I need to do next? Start pulling some details with dark blue. Um, so we were going to do that. And I started because we really thought like we only had, you know, weeks or days left with Jessie. We did not think she was going to pull through. She was so sick. So um, she quick, I mean, within like five days started doing better. But anyway, I started spending doing Black Friday. I bought, I needed a larger crate for the Greyhound. Um, I needed a lot of, of supplies for a large dog that I just don't have right now. So I spent money on that. I bought a new um, crate cover that is gorgeous. I actually am really excited about that. I bought a large dog bed. I bought a few things like, like large dog stuff. And I, I kept joking for every large dog or Greyhound item I buy, I'm pretty sure I'm adding another two months to Jesse's life. Jesse's like, what? You're buying things for another dog? I'm going to live. And that seems to be what kind of happened. Um, so I'm like, well, I guess I should just keep buying Greyhound stuff because it makes Jesse healthier. But yeah, so I bought a lot of stuff for the dogs. Um, I like pet shampoo that I needed more of. I just went shopping on stuff like that. Um, luckily everything I bought, I knew there were, you know, just in case Jesse did live, I, I needed stuff that I could easily store or stuff that I would end up using eventually because as well as she's doing now, no dog lives forever. So, you know, it'll all get used eventually, just not in the near future. Um, the big dog bed will be here next week. So that you'll see on future videos or future live streams. She's, but I figured my little, my Italian greyhounds could, could enjoy that. Um, even if I didn't get a big dog right away. So yeah, that is what I bought on Black Friday. My husband bought himself a tablet, um, like a cheapy Samsung tablet. And that was about it. I, don't, I didn't really spend that much because most of my money ended up going, well, the vet bills are getting higher now. They weren't at the time. But um, yeah, that was I'm trying to think. Oh, I got some nail stamping plates. That was my other, but it was like pr the week before Black Friday, but she gave the members of her group a early Black Friday sale. That was it for me. Um, let's see. Jenny said, Lou ah, where did I go? I just scrolled too far. Oh my gosh, it really scrolled too far. There we go. Jenny said, Liquitex has come out with a new formula for acry acrylic gouache. Have you seen or tried them? I have not. They also have now the, um, transparent mixing white in Liquitex Basics, which I'm really excited to get. I looked, we were at Michael's yesterday and they didn't have it yet. Steve said, bought some Strathmore colored pencil paper. Watched your video, return Strathmore colored pencil paper. <laughs> Good choice. My gosh, that paper is horrible. Like it's okay for graphite. It's just really bad for colored pencil. So why are you marketing for colored pencil 
when, yeah, that paper irritated me because they, they came out with like, look, we, we did all this research. It's just for colored pencil and it's so perfect. You didn't research anything. All you did was make a lighter weight vellum, which was crap. So regular vellum would have been a better choice because vellum, I don't like working on vellum. So uh, Strathmore Bristol vellum, it's too smooth. Not my favorite. Um, I've made some pieces on it that I like, but it's not my go-to paper at all. Well, for the colored pencil paper, that's pretty much what it was, but it was lighter weight, so it warped really bad. So now not only is it a terrible consistency if you ask me for colored pencil, I mean, and some people like Bristol Vellum, so that's fine, but most colored pencil artists don't, I would say. Most professional um, colored pencils are artists don't. And then you made it so lightweight that it buckles and warps. You can't use OMS on it. You can't use, oh my gosh, that paper is horrible. And it's not that I dislike Strathmore, Strathmore products. I just feel like they, they decided colored pencils getting popular. We're going to bank on that, you know, just cash in on that without doing the research to produce a product that colored pencil artists actually want. We just want to put colored pencil paper because we'll be the only people who make one that's specifically for colored pencil. Yeah. And it, it's the worst paper you could use for colored pencil. So good job there. So I felt like it was more of kind of like that money grab of, we just want to bank on that being popular without doing our research and actually making something that they'd like. Fabson Draw says, I saw a new painting up for sale on your website, The Rose and Grapes. Did you forget to post the advertisement on Instagram? I did. I have to load it onto my phone. It's a whole thing to get the advertisement from. I have to load it into my, save it as a certain file and then open the phone on the, it's a whole thing. So yes, I still need to do that. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. I'll try to remember to do it tonight. I got it. It should be up on Facebook. I just didn't get the Instagram ones kind of a pain because you can't, you have to post it from your phone, not from the computer, and it has to be a different file type. So I did save the file type. I just haven't loaded it onto my phone yet so that I could post it. Thank you for the reminder though. Um, Anu says, how do you embed the Fine Art America into your website? I don't remember if you go through your, um, it might be something that requires you to have their pro or whatever, their premium feature. I pay like $35 a year or something like that so I can have more photos. So I don't know if that gives me more options besides being able to have more more photos or paintings available for a print. But um, there was, I don't know, it was just through the settings. There was a... a app that I did or a add-on, I don't know. Um, I would just do a Google search, how to embed Fine Art America onto your website. You should be able to come up with it. I, it's been so many years, I, don't, I just don't remember. The nice thing with that too, though, once you get it set up, you don't have to maintain it, obviously, because I don't remember how I did it. It was so long ago. It's one, one of those once and done things. And then when I upload new um, prints onto Fine Art America's website, it automatically shows on mine. But it's been so many years, I don't even remember what process. I know it was something through my settings. I don't remember if it was a code I embedded. I don't even remember. But just Google how to, how to do that. Joseph says, my cat has a strict 17 second, 17 second pet limit. Any more pets gets the claws and teeth. Any less as well. <laughs> what? That is funny. I had a cat, my first cat that I had for, from, I had her from the time I was four until I was, she was, I just turned 21 when she died. So I had that, she was a Himalayan. So for a Himalayan, that's a, she lived a long time. She was the most amazing cat. But she, um, she didn't like other cats. She was amazing. She was good with dogs, birds, anything else. Do not bring another cat around her. Oh, that was going to be a problem. Art of Raven D said, I don't know exactly what bird is great for kids. It depends on the kid and the demon. <laughs> if it's a demon spawn, I wouldn't give them any pet. Yeah, well, exactly. Unfortunately, with kids too, a lot of times when they get birds, it just lives in the cage, which isn't really fair for, you know, for unless you're talking about a canary or a finch and it's a big cage. Um, and they've got buddies, but like parakeets was a big one that people would get the, the bird, they'll get the kid or the kid, they'll get them one parakeet. The parakeet spends its life by itself in a cage and that's just not fair. So, um, but there are some kids that will give the bird the attention they need. That's just not most kids. You know, most kids I don't think are mature enough to really have that kind of responsibility for a bird. Birds are so um, crazy, crazy smart and they're so social that being left alone all the time in a, a little parakeet sized cage that's what's even worse the paid cages listed for parakeets are so tiny it's like what a horrible life same thing with cockatiels a lot of people get them and then they just leave them in a cage all the time so um by themselves and it's like what a lonely lonely life so they're they're just not they're definitely not for everybody or every kid 
see how I'm start the detail I'm doing in here. I'm still not worrying about the, the shading or anything like that. I'm just starting to get some of these little lines and I'll have to come back through, get some highlights in between. I'm just going to keep layering and layering until it starts to look how I want. And I'm going to go through some ugly layers as I do this. The, the thing is, you don't want to rush this. I That was my biggest problem when I was younger. I would get those, you know those sea sponges that you can use to paint to do like faux finishes? I would get those and in my head, you just use that and that's one brush stroke, two dabs or whatever. There's your sponge, it's done. And it, I wasn't spending the hours and hours and hours it really should take to get the necessary detail so that it did start to look realistic. Um, that was such a big thing for me to really learn and start to understand. Let's see if I'm ready for this color yet. I don't think so. I think I'm gonna have to add more green. Anyway, yeah, that's too transparent. I'm gonna have to mix the color I want. So let's go. I've got a little bit of unbleached titanium white because that is super opaque. And I don't need this color to be perfect. I can come back through and glaze it as needed. And I, the big thing that's gonna make this stand out are the shadows that I've gotta put on the areas that I've got orange right now. None of that is really gonna be orange. There's gonna be very little. Most of that's gonna end up being brown and green but I just needed a base to start mapping that out. Paps and Drow says, I have a parakeet. I purchased him a week before the cage fell off the balcony and he escaped. Oh no! I had as a kid, I had a few times where some escaped. I'm so paranoid about that now. I mean, you only have to have it happen once before it's like, yeah, lesson learned. So gonna be super careful. Like I used to clean the cages. I would take the cage outside and clean it. And my grandmother's poodles were, we were babysitting them when she was on vacation once. And I just wasn't, didn't even think about it because my dogs never mess with the cage. The dogs knocked the cage over and then they got one bird and one flew away. But that was horrible. Hor one of those memories I will never forget. And now I am like the most paranoid person about a bird getting away. Okay, maybe not the most paranoid, but still pretty, pretty darn paranoid. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm having to scroll up. There we go. Tamara said, sorry if this is a repeat. My computer had a little hiccup, but great news about Jesse. Glad to hear it. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really glad. I'm so, I, we're still just shocked. That was, we were not expecting that. Um, Shading of the Heart said, we had a cockatiel when I was growing up who, who moved and would hold conversations with the cat. He would also shriek if anyone tried to nap in the living room. Oh yeah, if... If chicken sees me and I'm trying to sleep, yeah, that, that doesn't go well. Chicken wants to be with me all the time. So I, I definitely nap and sleep in another room. Chicken's quite attached. Um, those circle things she painted look like frog eggs. They kind of do, huh? Um, this color is not really working for how I want. I think I'm going to get my shadows in first and then put some highlights in between. Um, let's see. Sarah makes art said, during the live stream, I did sketches of some mountains over a lake a duck in a river and some leaves, and a canary on a porch. I plan to make all of them into paintings eventually. That's cool. Have I tried Strathmore 500 series paper? Strathmore is... Pro I don't know, honestly. I have so much paper that I bought and so much paper behind me. Some I've used, some I haven't. I honestly don't know for sure. I probably need to. Um, Lynn said it, it is a widget for, or for Fine Art America. It is the pro widget embed easily even on the blog okay so yeah you would have the paid one for fine art america if you're going to sell a lot of prints or if you have a lot of prints available i do rec i don't know why i just got that i don't need that color um i do recommend the pro version i don't know if the price has changed i know years ago when i started doing it so i haven't looked lately they may have charged me more but it was 35 dollars a year and it was definitely worth it it's been worth it for me there's there um the main thing was just being able to have a lot of paintings like so many prints available before you were limited with a certain amount of, a certain number and with the pro one you're not Need some I make some black and I think this was the burnt sienna Kathleen said, yes, you have to have a paid membership and you get that widget code to embed in your website. Okay, good. A couple of you know about that, that I apparently don't pay attention to. I've had the pro version way longer before, way longer than when they started having widgets and that sort of thing. So I never knew what, what the free version came with versus the paid. I'm not an expert on that. 
Art of Raven D said, I have seen the colored pencil pad at the store, but I'd rather not take the chance, especially since I'm happy with the paper I use when I do colored pencil. Yeah, and that's the, it was, it's kind of a funny, like, I get what they were thinking with Strathmore was like, we're going to make the only colored pencil paper so when someone's new and they get started and they're like, what colored pencil paper do I use? Obviously, they'll buy ours because we're the only one who makes one labeled that. So it was good marketing-wise, bad design-wise. I don't know what, like... It's just frustrating that they, I wish they would have researched that because they really could have been, which is funny because we don't need a special paper for colored pencil. Um, watercolor, you know, hot press watercolor paper is basically what all we really need. There, I mean, we've got other options besides that too, but. Kind of crazy. Um, Pablo said, how well did LightFast test by CPSA compare to the results provided by the manufacturers? Are the manufacturers reliable? Manufacturers are going to be far more reliable than CPSA. Um, why? Because CPSA, um, I mean, I appreciate what they do. I, I appreciate that they're doing these tests because it would call out if a manufacturer was super off. But the thing is, theirs is not really all that scientific. They're putting it into a warehouse that has a certain type of lighting coming through and that doesn't account for where there are a certain amount of days that were shaded or, you know, had overcast, where the colors at the exact same distance, it doesn't account for the same thing. Like a, if a, a manufacturer tests, they're using machines that are going to be scientific and accurate and the same every time. Whereas CPSA, there's too many variables. So now I'm not against testing on your own to get an idea of things, but it's not the same as the test a manufacturer is going to have. So the other thing you have to keep in mind too, the manufacturer's test, those are for, they're telling you like how long they're going to take to fade in museum quality or museum conditions. So not direct sunlight, not, you know, all of those things. Um, by putting in direct sunlight, you speed that process up. So it just gives you an idea, but they're also eyeballing the results. This is a big, big part of it. They have a, a group of people who will, will look at it and judge, um, well, I think this is a four. I think it's a five. I think it's a three. I think it's this. There's no, there's no science. It's all kind of guesswork. Again, not bad that they're doing it, but not the same level of accuracy as what the manufacturers are going to get. So part of it to me is going to come down to how much do you trust that manufacturer? I question new companies coming out. Um, no, I don't mean like Derwin came out with a new pencil. No, Derwin's been light, using their light fast tests in their labs for a while. So I trust them. But a lot of these new companies coming out claiming their stuff is light fast. I do question that. Are you really testing them? Um, Art Zaya is one that I'm kind of like, eh, I don't know. Maybe they'll end up being trustworthy right now. They haven't, like, I, I'm, I wouldn't be comfortable with, with their results. I'd actually be curious what color CPSA comes up with, but it's not the same level of accuracy as what a good manufacturer is going to come up with. Now, I'm not saying Art Zaya is not a good manufacturer. I'm just saying my general rule of thumb is if it's a new like I just they, they just started making art supplies I don't know if I trust all of the things that they're doing yet maybe eventually not right now um art is kind of a big deal to be messing around with um if you spend I mean the amount of time I'm going to spend on this to come back and find out oh the canvas you used it's going to fall apart in, in 30 years that would suck um that's why I go with Frederick's I know that's not going to happen um Transparency, I am sponsored by Fredericks, but I already only use them anyway because of these things. But um, art, like Art Zaya, I, or, I keep using Art Zaya because they're one of the most, like, they're all over the place right now. Like with them, they, they have a big, um, they kind of jumped into the art industry and were like, we're going to produce every single type of art supply ever. So I don't feel like they're experts on any one of them. And that's why the, one of the biggest reasons I don't trust them for that and some of the marketing stuff that they've done. That's just me. Um, I'm sure they're fine for beginners, but as a professional, I'm like, I, I just feel like I've got to, you know, question some of that. So I would be curious to see what CPSA comes up with on their light fast. Um, but usually CPSA is pretty similar to what the manufacturers. Similar, not exact. But who am I going to trust more? Hands down, a re reputable manufacturer is who I'm going to trust um, between the two. Because again, we're coming, we're talking about scientific testing versus eyeballing, putting it in uh, the sunlight in a window. And I mean, it's the same type of test you or I would do at our own home. I'm pretty sure a good manufacturer is going to get more accurate results. Um, let's see. But that was a really good question. Yes, the manufacturers, if it's a good manufacturer, yes, they are reliable. Uh scrolling and that just scrolled way too far ah there we go pablo said oh i'm sure you're even allowed to answer my last question sorry no i can answer i'm not a member i'm um i mean i have nothing against cpsa but there was no benefit for me being a member i was like for a year i was curious actually about those light fast ratings um 
But there's, I mean, I don't enter shows. I don't go to meetings because I don't drive. I don't have time for meetings. So for me, there was no benefit, but they're not bad. Like I, I don't by any means want to give the impression they're like, oh, I don't like CPSA or they're bad or because they're not. Um, and what they're doing is providing a service on those tests that no one, you know, it, it gives you something to go by. And CPSA has been involved a lot in making sure manufacturers are light fast testing and getting that information out there to manufacturers that that's something that's important to artists. So they have done a ton of good. I don't want to remotely give you the impression that I'm saying they're bad or don't listen to them. I'm just saying um, manufacturers, when it comes to the actual light fast testing, manufacturers are who I'm going to trust the most. A good manufacturer. A reputable manufacturer. <laughs> Um, Sulu said, Lisa, I love you, but for the life of me, I can't figure out what those things you're painting. It's a type of, I'm pretty sure they're a type of polyp. They don't look like, if you saw what I'm looking at, it is nothing like what this looks like yet. They will, but it's just, I've got to start layering these. This is going to, all this corals, polyps, mushrooms, it's going to be an underwater scene, basically, that his mane is going to be built out of. I'm starting a, a whole series of, um... See, right now I'm outlining stuff. This is just super cartoony looking, but I just need to start defining things and then I'm gonna put color on top of this. They're basically like underwater flowers is kind of an easy way, but they're, they're gonna need so much shading. Like right now, they're just flat. Right now they look like cartoons. Thanks, Hillary. I don't have his calm voice though. Hillary said, your positive teaching style reminds me a little of Bob Ross. I just, yeah, I don't have the calm voice that he does. Or the, the, the awesome hair. I'm a little jealous of his hair. Um, Ursi said, this line is very cool. Thank you. Sarah said, joining these two who are happy about Jesse, or joining the two, those who are happy about Jesse. Thank you, Sarah. Maya said, what are the best papers for colored pencil with OMS? I know about Fabriano Artistico, but it's hard to get here. Um, if you can get Arches, I love Arches hot press watercolor paper love um they're probably my favorite right now either the blocks or the individual i think the individual ends up being a little bit cheaper um and just cut it down to the size you want um can't send me tans the smooth side is pretty nice it's a little bit more absorbent so it's a little different but you can also get fun colors with that um uh stonehenge is decent Stonehenge is a little weird. Um, like an artist, Alan Woolett, some of you guys know him. He is ama amazing, amazing. He mostly does birds with colored pencil. And he calls Stonehenge Spongehenge. And that is a very accurate way to put it. It's like, it, it's spongy. It's squishy. It's, um, he hates it. But um, I'm okay with it. I like it. I, it's not my favorite favorite, but it's still good. To, like, I, I don't dislike it. Um, I would happily use it. I've actually got a ton of it here. That I eventually will use, but um, that one's okay too. Sunshine said, or K Sunshine said, my cockatiel used to sing the Oscar Mayer Wiener song, the whole song all day long, and moo and bark and cuss at guests. He was a handful. Chicken says bok bok. We I taught him to say bok bok chicken bird, so he says that a lot. And he'll sit there going bok 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 bok, and he holds that bok out really long. It's hilarious. So he does that and he sings Game of Thrones and says Big Chicken. Nugget says that too. Actually, everything Chicken says, he's taught to Nugget, which is really funny because Nugget's voice is so tiny and cute. Chicken's a lot louder. This, what I'm doing, this outlining is super elementary looking. Don't feel like that's, you want to outline everything in your artwork. I'm just starting to block in shapes. This is going to get you very little of what I'm doing. We'll show through in the end. Jenna says, eek, I do marketing for a living. Bad design is bad marketing. There is nothing worse than your marketing, for your marketing than a PO'd ex-customer. Yeah, the, I, mean, I don't even know what, um, Strath Strathmore was thinking on that paper. That was like one of those, what, when I tried it, I was super excited. I actually really expected to like it. None of the things that you we typically do with colored pencil, I don't think it was good for any of it. Like my color saturation was bad, OMS was bad, the it warped so bad. And it was funny because people were like, well, it warped, but you use airbrush on the paper. And it's like, I use airbrush on most paper. Most paper should be able to handle that. Um, for some reason, that paper couldn't. It warped like crazy. Um, and even if I was like, okay, well, we'll write that off because it's obviously airbrush on a colored pencil thing, but that's two things that I used together. So I needed to test to see if it could handle that. But everything else I did too, OMS, burnishing, everything made that paper warp. It was like, it was frustratingly bad. Um, not impressed. 
iced coffee. It is good. Half decaf because I can't handle caffeine. You care. Okay. Whoops. Scrolling. If I scrolled too far, sorry. Oh, wait. Oh, I did scroll too far. Wow. That just skipped a ton of questions. Okay, we have, Valerie said, Artzea doesn't make their products. They're made in China and Artzea name is placed on them. And see, in that I don't trust. I do not trust a lot of the stuff we've seen come out of China the way that, I mean, sometimes you get great stuff and sometimes you don't, but we don't know enough information. And I just, they, a lot of those companies don't take things as seriously as for art supplies. I would want them taken. And that's a big deal to me. Um, I, I, I just don't trust it at this point. Maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe 10 years down the road, we'll find out these really are great art supplies. I'm thinking probably not. I think that they're probably going to be good to get people started because they are very inexpensive. But considering the price, I also have a hard time time believing they actually did real light fast testing on it, like on these super cheap colored pencils. I just, maybe they're the most amazing thing and they figured out how to do things cheaper than anyone else has ever been able to. I doubt that. Um, I don't know. Again, I'd be happy to be proven wrong. But we're not going to know that for too many years, and I'm not willing to risk my own artwork because I do sell my work. It's not something I'm going to work, going to risk. So I'll be really interested. So I'm really hoping that CPSA does test those because I would be super interested to see what their results are. That would be one case I think I would trust CPSA. Well, you, we also know, I mean, we can look at CPSA's results and see how accurate their, or like how close their testing is to manufacturers. And so if the same, we should be able to expect the same thing with any Art Zaya pencils. So it'd be interesting if, and I don't even know if, if CPSA is planning on testing those. I haven't talked to them. I, I have no idea. But it would be interesting to see if they're getting the same results with those or level of accuracy, like theirs are as close to the manufacturer's testing as we've seen with other pencils. So yeah, it would definitely be interesting. Um, Anna said, I've been working on the litur liturgy for my next sermon and just looked up. My first thought was, she's painting daisies. Yeah, it, they look like daisies. They actually, they really do. Um, they won't be, but they do. Tamara said, that color looks great against the tawny of the lion. The painting has inspired me to do something surreal soon. Yay! And this color won't be anything like this. Like, this is mostly going to be these green, dark greens and browns with this muted blue in it. Like, there's so much that these are going to end up... These will look very different. This sort of thing, it's tedious, but it's also really relaxing. Like, it doesn't take a ton of thought process. It's just like, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. You just have to keep reminding yourself because I do know some people will get frustrated like, oh, it doesn't look like the photo yet. Well, no, I, it'll get there. Um, don't, don't beat yourself up if what you're doing to start with doesn't look quite the same. Oops, and that's scrolled too far. There we go. Pablo said, you're such an amazing source of info. Instead of joining the CPSA, no, it's a harsh feeling. I, I'll use my student budget to sign up for your Patreon instead. Thanks. Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm not trying to discourage anyone from CPSA. They're, they're, they do a lot of good. So I just want to make that clear. I actually, I've met a lot of people. Um, the My podcast co-host is a part of, of CPSA. He's still a member. He goes to their meetings and their shows. If you've got time to do that, then I think it's great. Like they have different chapters in different cities, especially if you live in bigger cities, where they have meetings and they have workshops and they do things that are really cool. But for me, I couldn't really take advantage of any of those. So, and, you know, that wasn't a fit. So... Maybe it will be in the future. Definitely not now. So right now, the, the brush strokes that I'm making are very um, repetitive. And so I don't have that natural feel yet. But there's going to be so much shading over this that a lot of this, like I said, it's so much is going to get covered um, later on. Jenny Lewis said, can you please zoom in on those when you are done? You know, I'll post a photo when they're done, when this whole section is done. I'll post a photo on Instagram so it's a good, good photo. Um, you, unfortunately, if I zoom in, it just gets more pixely because I'm so zoomed in already. I probably should have just put my camera closer, but too late for that. So I'll get a, a good one for Instagram, though, um, when they're done. I don't, I don't know that I'll even be done with these ones tonight. Maybe. Maybe I'll keep working on them after. 
Steve, whoops, Steve says, I wish my high school art teachers actually knew what they were doing. My art teacher started teaching us Bob Ross techniques with acrylics. Ooh, yeah, that's hard. I've taught, I mean, and I understand what he's thinking because, kind of, because you're usually not going to start high school kids with oil paint. That is a hot mess. But, and I've taught students where they wanted to do Bob Ross stuff, and so I had to adapt so that it was similar. You know, they could do some of it with acrylic. It's obviously not going to be the same because you can't really paint with a palette knife the same. You could. You'd need you'd need tools high schools aren't going to introduce to you, different types of um, texturing medium and stuff to make it work like oils. But, yeah, the blending and everything, it's definitely very, very different. Um, unfortunately, with high school, most of the teachers don't take it. Like, the ones that I came across didn't take it super seriously. Like... Most of the kids didn't take it seriously. They were there to have fun. Um, I was really lucky because my senior year of high school, I had changed um, schools. And this one had an AP studio art class that they put me in. I just showed them what, what I drew on my own. And it was great because they were like, okay, here are the materials. Have at it. Um, they would just give us a theme. And then we got to paint or draw, you know, whatever within that theme or with the, that medium. And I learned more from just having access to supplies that I we just had, I mean, Acrylics, we didn't have oils. I don't think I ever did oils, but we did oil pastels. We did acrylics. We did, and he didn't teach us how to use any of them. It was, here are the supplies. We expect you to know how to do it because it's the AP class, and here's your theme, go. I loved it. I used to spend all my lunch times in there, too. Um, it was a new school, so I didn't know a lot of people, but I would spend most of my lunch breaks in there painting. He just let me hang out in the classroom. I'd eat my lunch while painting, so I always I had the period before lunch and then all of lunch. I would just stay in there. Um, I absolutely loved that. Just having access to those supplies. So even if your teacher's not super helpful, have fun with the supplies that they're allowing you to use. Hopefully you can figure out stuff because even if you're doing it wrong, you're still learning something. Even if it's just learning what not to do. But yeah, I do wish that there were more, more high school teachers that had more, like my high school, my, my main, I went to, um, Claremont, California is where I had grown up and Claremont high school. I mean, that's a, that school was hard. That school was very, um, like just to give you an idea, I would turn in my senior year. I went to Etiwanda high school in Claire and California and the school, I would turn in stuff I wrote my freshman year in like English classes or whatever, the papers for that, that I got like a C on in, in Claremont. I turned it in my senior year in Etiwanda and get an A plus, like instant. I, I, I didn't have to do much work my senior year because everything was like so far advanced in, in Claremont. That was really odd, but I got, <laughs> that was way easier. But um, Claremont, the, the downside, they didn't have a good art program at all where Etiwanda had at least a teacher who, he'd answer questions for you. He'd let you have fun and do, you know, with the art supplies and stuff. I, I just really, really enjoyed that, that class. But like I said, even if you, I didn't have a teacher teaching me things, but I had access to art supplies that that alone, you can start figuring stuff out. Good night, Janice. Okay. Just letting this set a bit, a bit. I think what I may do I'm gonna let that dry for a bit. I'm gonna do a little bit more work on the blue. I'm gonna actually glaze a lighter blue, start getting the highlights and shadows in there. And then I'm going to glaze brown over the light colors around the edge of the knot daisies. Um, Art of Raven D said, luckily my, par my painting class in high school, I got independent contract and created whatever I want as long as it wasn't nude and other stuff. And he even carried oil paints and OMS, that is awesome. Like I yeah, having just access to supplies, like I wouldn't have known that I liked acrylics and acrylics is like my main my my I guess first love or what not first love, second love because I guess graphite, watercolor and color film. Anyway, I don't know. It's like one of my favorite my primary meetings, I would say. So um I wouldn't have known that without that class though of having access to some of those supplies. So I was super grateful for it. Claremont, I did not have that 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 such a big difference. It's amazing what the what a difference like the, the even from one school district to another can make. Okay, I'm actually gonna see how this looks. We're gonna do a little bit of experimenting, see if that's highlighted enough. Oh, it is. So I'm just taking this light blue. I'm gonna start putting those little lines in there. And I'll still have to do a lot of other shading, but I can start building the detail and texture. So this color is most, it's opaque. It's not as opaque as white, but it's still pretty opaque. So it's showing up really well. Just 
Charlotte said, I got the Artzea pencils. I like them so far. They don't break like Prismacolor. Yeah, I got those for my nephew. Um, so it's like, I mean, I can see where there would be a place for those, but it was interesting looking through their light fast ratings. Um, it was just like, I don't believe that they tested these for pencils that they're selling for under $20. I, I just really don't think they did it. Light, like good light fast testing is expensive. That is not a cheap thing. Like the machines that they use and all of that, that is not a cheap thing. And I seriously doubt that this random company from China is, did the testing. I, I just don't think they did. Could be wrong, hope I'm wrong. But while you're learning or you want something for a sketchbook, oh, you can't beat the price. So, I mean, even with like the um, Marco, what is it, Marco Refine, Marco Renoir, all, all those, I always liked those because even though they didn't do light fast testing, they do make the claim, oh, there's superior light fastness. You didn't test them, I know, because I talked to them. They didn't test them. They don't know if they're light fast or not, they're, so which means they're not. Most of them probably aren't anyway. Um, but they, they were real, they're so inexpensive. They're really good for someone to get started with and you were able to layer, you were able to do a decent amount with them. So it's not like I would say, don't ever buy Artzea products. I'm just saying as a professional, eh, I don't trust them. But for somebody learning, then that's, you know, that's obviously fine. As soon as you start selling your work though, you, you've got to take that a little bit more seriously. Learn from my mistake. When I, I tell this story all the time. But when I first started oil painting, I thought I could save money. I was so broke. And I thought I could save money by getting lit, or linseed oil from the hardware store. Because it says it's linseed oil. It's the same stuff, right? It's not. Um, it's not filtered. It's not, I don't know. It caused a lot of damage in the paintings. It was fine while I worked on it. It wasn't until like a year, six months later, or whatever, that they started to basically fall, not fall apart. Like it started to, to lift. I'd have these heavy, it almost looked like someone dripped linseed oil. So it had lines of like, these heavy yellow drips all over. It was really weird because it didn't look like that months before at all. But um, I had sold a couple of them like that at art art shows and art fairs because I didn't know that it was going, I had no idea. Well, I should have researched. Well, okay, to be fair, internet wasn't really a thing at the time, so I didn't research stuff. Um, or internet was just starting to come out, but there wasn't as much information online as what you have now. But it's one of those things I will always regret. And if you happen to be the person who bought those whale paintings from me and you can show me a photo of it, I will replace that with you for, a, for you with a brand new, like, amazing painting that's not what I painted 20 years ago. Um, but I, I always hope that person, like, that got that painting would come across it. But chances are to them it was just more of a craft thing than a fine art thing, so they didn't really care. Because I don't think that I charge them more than, like, $60 for it. But point is, I still feel guilty about it. And I really wish I hadn't sold something that I didn't know more about. And that's why even now I'm so, I guess, neurotic uh, or picky about not selling, you know, even with my watercolor pencils. Yeah, they're light fast, but I need to find out first how are they when I add more water to them. Like I need to find out more information before I'm comfortable selling certain things just because I don't want to make that same mistake and then feel guilty forever because of it. 20 years later, I still feel guilty about that linseed oil issue. Uh, let's see. Steve Anthony said, we did an oil painting unit. And she didn't teach us anything, but I still learned so much from just using them. Exactly. I mean, even I taught myself. I did not take class. I mean, I took, I had the AP Studio Art class, but they just gave me the supplies. You can teach yourself so, so, so much just from playing with the mediums. Like, I know a lot of people will, will get so caught up in wanting to read every book, wanting to watch every video, like, but they don't want to go to the easel because they feel like they need to be an expert before they paint. I mean, it's kind of like trying to learn to drive a car by reading a book. You have to go do it to learn it. So yes, the, the books and the videos are going to help and like be a huge help and make you learn faster, but you have to actually go experiment. So yeah, you can teach yourself so much. Um, Charlotte said, I paint in oils, just starting pencils. Nice. Are you doing colored pencils or graphite or what do you like? Uh, that's roll too bar. There we go. Gail said, can you please explain what glazing is? Yes. Okay, so glazing, like what I'm doing right now is not considered a glaze. This is just thick paint. It's not very transparent. It's just slapping the paint on there, basically, like Bob Ross style, I guess. You know, just putting the paint on, letting it be thick. Um, a glaze is going to be where I'm going to thin that paint out with water, or you could thin it with glazing medium, which is a transparent, like a clear transparent medium. And it makes that color, especially if it's an already kind of transparent color, it's going to make it more translucent and you can tint the color. So think of it as like tinted windows, but with paint. So you can still see the detail underneath, but it softens it because you're putting a layer on top and then you're tinting the color. So it also is really nice because in person, you can't really see on, on um, in photos, but in person, depending on how the light is coming 
through and hitting that painting, the light is refracting and bouncing around and you get a lot more depth. So it, 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 it much more so than if you just painted like paint by number style or whatever, where it's just thick, opaque paints. Um, Lubin says, linseed oil remains in liquid state if it comes in contact with humidity. Also, it yellows with age. Oh, it does yellow. That I, I learned the hard way. That joke said, hey, just got the 72 set of the German watercolor pencils, and I was wondering, what are your tips for making tears in your portrait? Um, transparency. It's really just, don't look at it as, I'm painting a tear, a tear's going to be blue. It's, it's not going to be blue, first of all, unless you've got some reflections going on there. But it's going to be just, you're seeing the shadows, because the color, the tear itself is going to be clear. So you're going to create the shadows and highlights on whatever color it's gonna be the same color as what like let's say it's a tear on the skin it'll be the same color as the skin slightly shifted my biggest tip go look up good photographs where you've got this high def photo of the tear on the face and like see if you can find something on pixabay and try to recreate that but really pay attention it's a difference of your values and shading it's not like a color like oh it's a tear paint it blue like that's cartoony don't do that i don't know if that's helpful or not hopefully it is um pablo said do you already know certain subjects you'll be covering in the Sharpened Artist podcast soon. No, um, we're actually really bad about, we, we always give ourselves the assignment, like each one of us needs to come up with a topic by next week, and then we don't. And then we're sitting there like, time to record, and we're like, so, what are we gonna talk about today? <laughs> we're trying, you know, we have to, to think something up. Um, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. <laughs> Tamara said, I used to make sculpted, and also for the Color Pencil Podcast, if there's something you want us to talk about, go make a request in the, the Facebook group, or you can message John, um, what is his Twitter? Sharpened Artist, Twitter, sharp, I don't know, go to sharpenedartist.com. The links are all there. Um, Tamara said, I used to make sculpted fairies out of polymer clay and found out a year after one year, it was very prone to cracking. I felt so awful, stopped making them immediately. Yeah, see, oh, it's the worst feeling. I hate that. Scott said, I'm used, um, I'm used to using Prisma pencils, but the quality has really gone down. What would you recommend? Are you talking about graphite or colored pencil? Um, for, let's say for, for graphite, I love, love, love the Faber-Castell 9000 series and the Derwent graphic, um, gra graphics, the, the new ones, not the old ones um, of the Derwent. Those ones are my favorite graphite pencils. The for colored pencil, my favorites are Faber-Castell Polychromos and Caran d'Ache Luminance. I love using those together, but I'm also really starting to love more and more all the time the Derwent Drawing uh, pencils. Those are like on my must-have list now, super waxy, super like great for portraits and stuff. Um, I also really like the Derwent Light Fast pencils, although with those, not all the colors are out yet, so that's very limited. I love those. I love the Derwent Pro Color, but like half of them aren't Light Fast, so that's an issue there. Qu um, Performance-wise, I love the Pro Color. Um, how do I keep the paint from drying out on my palette? I don't. I mean, this is like, that's dry completely. So what I'll do, actually I can show you how I'm going to take that off. So this is a glass palette. This is the new wave glass. Um, it's already painted gray on the bottom and it's setting inside a master's, Masterson, I don't know, links in the video description. It's setting inside. It's basically like a big Tupperware. I've got a blue lid that goes over the top. And when I'm not painting, like I've got tons of colors out, don't want to waste these obviously. So what I'll do is take a paper towel and get it wet and leave the wet paper towel sitting in the thing overnight. Or I've left it in there for like a month and came back a month later and the, all the paint was still good. But here, whoops, <laughs> touch wet paint there. Um, here where this is dry, this is starting to dry, this is dry. What I'm going to do is take just a regular like spray bottle. I'm gonna mist a little bit of water over the areas I wanna scrape and that's gonna loosen it up. And then I'm gonna take a glass scraper, which is just a razor blade on that, and just scrape that up. Now I've got this nice clean palette, although some of that paint was still really wet, so not really ready to be scraped, but whatever. Um, but that way I've got this nice, clean, clean palette, which is so nice to work on. I don't know how I went so many years not doing this. What I used to use, I think I've got some down here I can show you. Um, oops, let me get rid of the little remnants there. I maybe put a little too much water there. Um, it'll be fine. I used to use the peel off palettes like this. Ugh. Um, the problem with these palettes, they're usable. The problem is when you go to peel, it's like it doesn't come off altogether. You get pieces of it come off. 
it's really satisfying to peel off, but only pieces will. Like if it's a thick bit of paint, like right there, that came off in one piece. The only way that this one really works to clean is if when I'm done painting, I took the excess paint and just spread it all over the whole palette. This is super dusty. This is behind my easel. Apparently that's not an area I clean very well. Um, but that would allow um, you to kind of peel it off all in one, but you have to waste so much paint. Like it has to be on there thick and really dry and it's not convenient. Whereas here, this started to dry, just scrape it off and go again. You can't really scrape it off with a razor blade on that the plastic palette because it's plastic. It's, you're going to get ridges that will make it so that in the future you're not able to peel off of that. But it was just, oh, here's one actually that I did it on. This is what you have to do with those peel offs. See how I just spread the paint around that I used? Now, because it, I've, but I had to waste a ton of paint to do that. Now it'll peel off all in one piece. So satisfying. Um, well, mostly one piece. But see how now it's nice and clean. But I had to waste a ton of paint in order to make that work. And it was basically just my leftover paint. I don't waste much paint on this palette. So this palette costs a lot more to get started with because the glass piece was about $40. The tup, I say Tupperware, the Masterson's, it's like Tupperware, the part that seals out air that it sets in was probably around 20-ish. But you just reuse the same thing over and over and it's super easy, super, um, it, it's just the most practical and it saves, it saves in the long run, it saves me a lot of time and a lot of money. I also used to use a, a tin foil, a piece of tin foil or on a pie tin. That worked and you just threw it out so there wasn't much cleanup. I like that better than those palettes, but I was wasting the tin foil every single, you know, you go through a lot of waste. You're wasting paint, you're wasting that. Here, I don't waste nearly as much paint because all of this is gonna stay wet the whole time I'm painting this until it runs out. I've kept paint wet for over a month on this. It probably could have stayed wet longer if you put that wet paper towel in there. So that was, a. Uh, um, that's how I clean that when I need to. The, what was the other thing I was gonna mention when it came to cleaning palettes? I don't remember, it slipped my mind. It'll come back at some point. But, oh, the Stay Wet palette, that was the other one. I don't like the Stay Wet palettes because it puts like this wet, almost like a wet paper towel, but it's not that, it's kind of more spongy. Um, sheet that stays under and it keeps it wet. Those start to stink. I just never was really thrilled with those and it, it changed the consistency. And you think, well, doesn't the paper towel you have in there start to smell? I just throw it out, so that's no big deal. But the um, Stay Wet palettes I found changed the consistency of the paint into something that I did not like because I do use a lot of water when I'm mixing my paint or even paint, um, mixing medium and I didn't like how it behaved with the Stay Wet palettes. So those weren't a fit for me. But like this, the company, the Master, Masters, Masters, I don't like here. What's the lid say? Masterson. Big, there's my lid. But that that palette, or top of that palette, or God, I can't talk. Apparently I'm getting tired again. Um, oh, thanks, Salu. But that's really sweet of you. But the, um, I got all excited. Not less much pain Um Oh, the, the Masterson palette, that's the same company that does the Stay Wet, or they make Stay Wet that fit in these. I don't know if it's the same company, actually, but I just didn't like those. So for me, the glass palette, glass scraper, and then inside the Masterson's has been the absolute, like, it saves me time. It saves my supplies. My paint lasts a million times longer because I don't have to throw it away. Like, when I'm done painting for the night, I'm not like, oh, look at all the paint I just wasted. This is good for the next, you know, as long as I keep sealing it, it stays good for a really long time. So I love this palette setup. Um, let's see. Um, Steve said, use a lot of mediums, even water-soluble mediums like ink tents, water-soluble water graphite, but never watercolor. I use watercolor pencils and I do want to get some watercolors. Yeah, that is something like regular watercolors is something that I see in my future. Uh, Madison said, oh, that scrolled too far. Madison said, I feel so lucky when I hear about Prismacolors for a while. I thought I had a good batch or something, but the more... But I bought more sense. I think it's Derwent Super Point Sharpener. Yeah, you may be just, I mean, you get some good batches. Sometimes the sharpener, and as that sharpener starts to dull, because they all will, you'll start having more breakage. Switch out the blade if you can. I'm not sure if that, that sharpener allows you to switch out blades or not. If not, just, you know, replace the sharpener. But Prismas are just very temperamental, more so than I have the patience to deal with. Gail, oops. Gail said, I have a Stay Wet palette. My paint's got moldy. Ew, yeah, no. I'm not a fan. And I'm also like the smell of like a wet towel or something. I hate that. Like I'm, I'm super neurotic about that sort of thing. So yeah, no, not a fit for me. Um, I do not like those for many reasons. Um, Tasha said, if you're, you're getting a smell, you're in your master's and trainer, try putting a layer of Lysol wipes under the moist layer or, or I could stick to the, the, 
glass palette and I don't have any of that to worry about. I'm also super sensitive. Like I get massive headaches if I'm around, if I have like any mold or mildew start growing. Like sometimes in my plants, if they got over watered, they'll like part of the pot will start to kind of get like mildewy or moldy or whatever. I'll start getting massive headaches and have to go repot stuff. So yeah, that's not a fit for me. That's for sure. Some people love them. That's fine. They're just not, not for me. Okay. Let's go ahead. I'm going to start adding a little bit of this shading. So this color here is actually a little bit more on the opaque side of things. It's not super transparent. So I need to get these dark colors so that when I put my green highlights, they'll show a little bit better. And I'm just going to wipe those along the edges. Very similar to how I would paint a sunflower, actually. And I'm not trying to completely cover the highlights. Some of the highlight can show. I'm good with that. I think the biggest thing you can learn from this video is just to keep layering until it looks how you want. Don't stop because, I mean, at this point, a lot of people would be like, oh, it looks like flowers or it looks like what, you know, close enough, there's paint on it, I'm done. No, and you'll see this when I post the finished section of these on Instagram. This right now is so cartoony. This is not the look that I wanted. And that was the problem that I had when I first started painting Marine Life. I didn't want them to look cartoony. I wanted them to look realistic, but I couldn't. And I kind of fell into two that, well, it's just my style then. That's just how I paint. No, I just needed to take my time and slow down and keep layering until it looked how I wanted it to. Don't accept that concept of, oh, this is just how I paint, if that's not what you wanted it to look like. That just means you need to work longer on it or work harder or keep practicing. But it's very limited to um, think that way of, oh, that's just how I paint. Limited, limiting, whatever. Grammars are not my forte. Oh, oh, that scrolled too far again. Hi, Rebecca. Peggy said, have you ever used the glazed porcelain floor tiles as a palette? They clean up with a razor. No, I have not. Madison said, so far, uh, so far, far, so good. It's been years and I haven't had a Prisma break yet. Okay, you're magical. Yeah, I'm just going to go with that. You're magical because, yeah. It's funny. I, um, I had to use, I was doing a, a sample, um, just comparing some different brands of pencils a few months, actually it's probably more like over a year ago, but I had to pull the Prismacolors out. And as soon as I used one, snaps, I'm like, oh my God, seriously. So frustrating, not a fan. Okay, I'm gonna start getting a little bit more, Let's see what colors I want in here. Actually, I can just take some of this and let this neutralize over the blue a bit this orangey red color or brown color. Ooh, too much water. Um, Steve said, have you tried, I can't say it, Mussini, whatever oils, they're made from natural resins and they glaze so well. If you like glazing, nope, I have not. You know, the reason that most, for the most part that I was using the Windsor Newton for so long is just that they were easy to get. Most art supply stores carried them and they didn't carry other brands. So I never really got into trying a whole lot of others. And then by that point, I had such a large collection of the Windsor Newton. It's like, yeah, I'll just stick with this. They work. You know, I'm used to them. They'll work. But I do want to, I think I'm going to start getting more and more of the Grumbacher for sure. And then the other, what is it? I say Old Holland, Holland something. I wanted to try more of those too. Some of the oils get like so, so expensive. And for me, I just don't notice the difference. I mean, it's kind of like for me buying, buying a bottle of wine. Like I, I'm not gonna spend $100 on a bottle of wine because I can't tell the difference between that and the $20 bottle of wine. Like it just doesn't make sense to me to spend that kind of money. So, and I feel like that a lot of times with the oils, it's like I'll use them and sometimes I can tell a difference in the consistency, but for the most part, you adapt your technique so you can make the one work just like the other. And I'm like, I just don't see the point of spending $50 on a tube of paint that I got for 15 of the other one there if they're both light fast and I can make them both work I don't know that's just me <laughs> I may change my mind I reserve the right to completely change my mind on that in the future though but that's been my experience so far where I was just like eh, I'm just not seeing a big enough difference to so because I have a few small samples of different paints and I'm like I mean they're good but I've not convinced myself yet that I need um to go spend thousands of dollars on different oils 
I thought if you, a few, a couple of years ago, actually, I thought that that might be one of the next things that I upgrade to like a more expensive brand. And it's like, as I was looking into them and the few that I tried, it was like, I just don't see a big enough difference to at this point. Now, if it was an issue of light faster or something like that, then absolutely. that That's going to matter a lot to me. But, and what are my favorite acrylics? The Right now, I mostly use Liquitex Basics. I, I have a few of the heavy body, a few of the soft body, but for the most part, Liquitex Basics. The consistencies, the consistency of them, and then the fact that they dry pretty matte just work really well for my techniques with the airbrush, with the charcoal pencil, with everything. They just are a fit for how I work. Um, it's not an issue of price for me. It's just an issue of performance. Now, I am tempted to try the Goldens. They have some acrylics that I kind of want to try with their matte medium that would make it more matte because they said they think I'll like it. I'll have to go buy some and try it, but I, ha I haven't yet. Um, Ellie said, the shopping took forever. I've just come home. I tried the Zebra Ink Tense with Pixabay reference. I tagged you in the Facebook group. Oh, cool. I have to go look at it. Okay. I'm waiting. Most of what I'm doing is just waiting for this to dry. Um, little bits of it here and there. Make kind of a muddy color here for some of the shadow on these guys. Now, if you want to do something super, super realistic, like even with these, work bigger. You're going to be limited if you're working on a small, a small canvas trying to put in tons of detail. It's not going to work that well for you. Working bigger gives you a lot more a bit of an, the ability to get tiny, tiny details. If that's something that you really like. I remember even said, I remember when I say I don't like red wine and I'm told, oh, but this one's expensive. You'll love it. Nope, it still tastes like... I, I'm not repeating that because, you know, don't want to lose the monetization on my, my channel, which is hilarious. Um, yeah, that I felt that way about wine forever. I always wanted to like it. And then a friend of mine last summer came over and he brought something. Um, I think I've told this story. It was just, it was really funny. So he asked what kind of wine my husband and I like. Um, and I'm like, we really don't. We are going to go with anything else. I think I was drinking like margaritas in a bottle or something like that. I had a couple of those, which were terrible. And I do not recommend like pre-mixed. It was terrible. But anyway, um, he had us try his. He's like, no, try this wine. So we tried it and it was really good. I'm like, wow, I've never had wine that I could tolerate before. So I'd only tried it a few times. I, I just never really, um, I liked the idea of it, never really liked it. So he, it was a red wine. So I went out looking for it thinking it's like, I looked at, at Target. I looked at Whole Foods. I was looking all over and finally I messaged him and I'm like, what, where did you get that? We can't find it anywhere. He got it from QT, which is a gas station. I'm like, oh, apparently I like gas station wine. So that was my intro to, and ever since I've tried lots of different ones. Like I have fun going, we went to a place called Total Wine. Um, it's like a giant, giant liquor store. And it's fun to go with their employees and tell them like, okay, I like red wines. I like dry wine. I, you know, whatever types you like. And they'll walk you through and help you pick stuff. Um, as it turns out, I really like wine from Argentina. So um, that, that was definitely, that's a lot of fun. Because I don't get to try a lot of different things. My diet is so limited. So it's fun to be able to try different types of wine. I've definitely been enjoying that. But funny for how many years I was like, I don't like wine. I'm not trying it. But I've really been enjoying it. Okay, anyway, um, let's see. Kathy said, are you concerned this project might not work out the way you hoped or worried at all? I'm not worried at all because if it doesn't come out right, that means I'm not done. I'm going to mess with it and I'm going to work on it until it does come out how I want it to. So with this one, I'm not super worried. And then with corals and anemones and fish, that's where I probably have the most expertise. So I know for a fact, like this ugly stage is exactly what it should look like right now. Like I'm not afraid because I've done it so many times. So that doesn't worry me. Um, I think if I were painting a subject that I wasn't super familiar with and I was trying to combine things, I might be a little bit more like, oh, I don't know if it's going to work. But with this, no, I'm not. I'm really not worried about it because like I said, if it doesn't look good, I'm going to work on it until it does so this this one will work I've had a few ideas that I tried where it was like it didn't come out right like what was it I tried to do the nighttime scene with trees but instead of leaves it was clouds but because it was nighttime it just looked like trees in the dark so the trees rain was it, it didn't work um that is not going to be the case with this <laughs> that was something I'd never really tried before good question though but if something isn't looking how you want it just means it's not done keep messing with it until it does oops that is too bright 
Like one of the best things that you can learn and the best practices that you can get into doing is figuring out how to fix mistakes or figuring out something comes out ugly. Why is it ugly and what can I do to fix it? If you can learn that lesson, you can do anything. Like it, it will really help, especially if you get to where you're taking commissions or I don't know, just anything. It's so helpful for you to learn how to fix things that you don't like. So if something goes wrong, don't kick yourself like, oh, I ruined it. No, you're about to learn a really good lesson if you can figure out how to fix it. Oops. That was going to scroll too far. Um, Pablo said, you know how if OMS affects light fast a colored pencil? I think I remember you talking about it in a podcast, but I'm not really sure. We've not been able to find any information that it shouldn't because it's not reducing, it's not changing the pigment. The pigment is still there and that is the part that is going to be light fast. So we've not found any information or any proof or anything that says that it does. Um, a few, few manufacturers were basically like, and I think they were just kind of watching their own backs like, well, it might, we don't know, we didn't check. But there's no reason like, theoretically, scientifically, there's no reason it should affect it because all it's doing, it'll dissolve some of the binders, but the binders aren't what's light fast. The color of the pigment is what should be light fast. So um, it really shouldn't be any problem. And I've had things that I blended out with OMS that have been exposed to direct sunlight and they didn't fade one bit. Not a scientific test there, but I'm personally, it's not something that I'm worried about. Like if it affects it, it would be so minor. I don't think you would even notice. The other thing that you want to keep in mind too with the, it might, maybe it would if you weren't putting a lot of pigment on the paper, but the way that I work with OMS, if you've watched very many of my, my things, I've got so many layers on top of layer on top of layer and those final layers don't use much OMS anyway. So maybe that makes a difference. I don't know. But in theory, the way that the OMS works and all of that, it shouldn't affect it at all. And I've contacted a lot of people. I've talked to a lot of people and I can't find anything that would tell me don't do it. Other than a couple of companies are like, it might, but we don't know. Um, Brad says, the golden fluids now come in matte colors. Oh, I may be contacting golden because they actually supplied me with my airbrush, a lot of my airbrush paints. And I loved them so much, I went and bought a whole bunch more. But um, I love my golden airbrush paints. But I may contact them and I may be able to get them to send me some. What was, have you tried them? I'm curious what the difference in consistency versus the Liquitex Basics would be. I'm really interested in that now. Good, to, I'm, I'm excited. Okay, um, Mabel, because that was the main thing that held me back with the Goldens. The Goldens has so many amazing, amazing colors and I actually really like the company, um, like really like them. So I would love to use more of their products, especially with all those amazing colors. So yeah, I need to look into that. Um, Mabel said, working on wood panels and MDF boards. Sorry. Oh, I think I missed the first part of that question. I'm not sure what it was. I don't remember anymore because I have zero memory. I'm sorry. Um, Steve said, if you're looking at different brands of watercolor, Daniel Smith, I've heard a lot of good about that. Yeah, and the Schmidt, I can't say it. Schmidt are my favorites, although Daniel Smith is a lot cheaper than the, the one I can't say in USA because it's made here. That makes sense. Um, nourishing parenting. I have been painting, well, since I was a teenager. Um, I mean, I guess since high school, but I decided to become a professional artist. What would that be like 23 years ago, I guess? I started doing it like this is what I'm going to do for a living. Right around there. I don't know. I don't do math. Um, let's see. Steve Anthony said, all your work is so beautiful. You've done so much. Does the feeling of being nervous about a painting ever go away with your experience? Yeah, it does. Now, the thing that doesn't go away is every once in a while, I'll have a painting that I look at. I'm like, oh, it looks terrible. It's never going to look good. But even that's not severe because I know I just need to keep layering until that goes away. But as far as being like the nervous feeling, I think that that does, especially if it's something that you've painted like tons and tons of times or a subject like in this case. I've done so many things like this, um, maybe not the specific type of marine life, but something stuff so similar that it's like, I know I can make this look good. I'm just going to layer until it does. So I don't have the nervousness there, I guess. I'm not sure I ever did have a whole lot of nervousness, though. I think I don't know if nervous would be, be the right word for me at any point. Insecurities, maybe, but not really nervousness. Especially working in acrylics because it's, you know, you're not going to mess anything up. If it doesn't come out right, just layer on top of it till it starts to look good. It's like my life motto. 
work on it or keep keep going until it works. Rebecca said, I love gold, but can't afford it. Yeah, it is a bit more expensive. That it, it is. Brad said, blue acrylics are somewhat thinner than Liquitex Basics. Oh, that's interesting. See, what do I have? They're a type of fluid, but they'd be too thin. I wouldn't want to paint without what my airbrush paints are. But I think they have another one. I don't think I, I don't know if I would want to go with something that was thinner than, than the Basics. Okay, let's make a bright green. Actually, I wonder if I can get the dark green to show up enough if it's thicker. Nope, too transparent. Let's brighten that up. I'm going to mix a bit of Naples yellow because Naples yellow is quite opaque. This brush may be too big for what I want. Let's see. No, it'll work. I just don't push very hard. So Naples yellow is going to be one of your yellows that tends to be more opaque than all of your other yellows. Naples, um, the yellow, is it yellow oxide or yellow ochre? I forget what it is with the, the Liquitex. They're basically the same color, but they call it one thing, whereas another brand will call it something else. But that color is pretty opaque as well. This is just not going to be as bright as what I need. So I'm actually going to just go straight on with unbleached titanium white first, and then I'll put the green on top because this is, it's too muted. I don't want it that muted. Uh, Mabel said, sorry, the question actually accidentally got sent earlier. I meant to say, what is your opinion with working on acrylic and airbrush on Primes wood panels and MDF board? Okay, I don't like MDF board. It's too heavy, and you've got to consider that is going to be hung on somebody's wall. That is a, they've got to put that into a stud, and most of my paintings are not that heavy, so it's not a problem. Now, if you put a big heavy frame on it, then it's heavy either way. The weight of MDF boards, I don't like. Now, you can get thinner ones, but they have a tendency to warp, and that's a problem. So, unless the company making them can be like, yeah, this definitely won't warp. The other thing with some of the wood boards and the hard boards that people um, will paint on, you've got to be careful because some of them are treated with different chemicals. You've got to make sure that the type of wood you're using isn't. And whenever I've gone to like the hardware store and talked to people about it, they're like, well, we don't really know. Like you can't really get a lot of information to verify that. Now, if you're getting one made specifically for art and they're able to tell you, yeah, this isn't treated with anything, you know, chemicals and whatever, then yeah, that's actually really, really cool, especially just gesso it. But I've got some boards, um, like they're board boards. I actually use mine for when I'm painting with, um, Acrylic pores I like those best for. But I, I'm not a huge fan of MDF boards. I've got, I do have some that are like the lighter weight, lighter weight ones, the art, the specific art ones, um, not the ones that you get at the hardware store. And again, I'm just, I've done a few things on them. They're okay, especially airbrushing. They're, they're really good for airbrushing, but they still have weight that I'm like, eh, there's other options I, I definitely like better. Um, but then again, if you're going to use acrylics, the options I like better are papers that I use. I, wouldn't be my first choice. So I don't know. I guess it depends is my answer there. Stick with stuff that ideally is made for art. I know a lot of people would will make their own with the, the different types of MDF board and the different types of um, boards in general to paint on that they got at the hardware store. Just be careful. I know you didn't say hardware store, but I know a lot of people do get them there. You've just got to be careful of what that wood may have been treated for because it may not be archival. It's not gonna, it may not be acid free. You may end up with a lot of problems down the, later on down the road. So make sure with that. But the ones, again, made specifically for art, you should be fine with them. Um, I know some amazing artists who work on, on different ones like that. Um, Alexa, oh, what is her name? Alexa something. She does some really amazing stuff on, on different board um, like wood paneling. So I guess my answer is it depends on where you get them and if it's specifically for art or if you're talking about stuff you got at the hardware store. Mm, yeah, Gail said that Golden does have two different fluid acrylics, the fluid and then there's the high flow. The high flow I think is the airbrush one that I use. Um, Steve said, my, by nervous I mean the feeling of not being, bringing an idea to life from your head and being disappointed in the outcome. No, because for me, I'm just going to keep, I will work on it until it works. I'm going to make it work. There have been a few times that I was just like, yeah, this isn't going to work. And I threw it out very, very few times over, you know, 23 years or whatever that I've been painting. There have only been a handful of times that I was like, yeah, nope, trash. Um, it's not even worth the effort at this point. But now I, I make myself work on things until they're exactly what I want. So I don't think that I get super nervous about that just because it's like, I'm going to make it work. Like, I don't know, that self, that sense of just determination, like this is going to happen. Once I decide something, 
Um, in anything in my life, I have a tendency to do that. Once I make a decision, I'm set. Now, I may stress about making the decision or coming up with the ideas beforehand, but once that decision is made, that is, like I'm extremely stubborn and I'm gonna make it happen. Um, whoops, that just scrolled over our god. Um, let's see, someone said Liqu Liquitex has a new acrylic gouache that is highly pigmented with a matte finish. It can be combined with any other paint product and mediums. Liquitex has done really good with coming up with um, stuff that works for mixed medium, like their inks and they're like, they've got a lot of, they've got a lot of really cool stuff in their line for sure. Um, I've not tried the gouache one. I know a couple of people have mentioned it today, but I'm always impressed with the, with the stuff. I really do like the quality of, of Liquitex's products. Um, let's see. Scott said, I've seen you work with many mediums. What is your favorite to work with? Probably acrylics. But I, at the same time, I wouldn't want to just work on one. Like I've got to do, I'm going to do a live stream for Patreon in the next couple of weeks, um, probably with watercolor pencils. And I'm like super excited to do that. I love my ink tents. I love so many other things. Like I wouldn't want to, if I, I wouldn't want to choose like just one of, that I could only ever work on. I would definitely get bored. But yeah, I would say acrylics are probably my favorite. I feel like I can do anything with those, maybe just because I've been working with them for so long. But I also include airbrush as part of the supplies with, it, with acrylics. Whoops, that went, there was a quick comment from Valerie. There it was. Check out the Trekkel wood pencils. They're totally, ah, stop scrolling. They're totally awesome and made for art. Trekkel.com. I'll have to look into that. What, when you say check wood panel, oh, Trekkel wood panels. I, I, thought, I read that as pencils. Yeah, my eyes are tired. I don't know what brand of wood panels I have here, but I like them for the acrylic pores because with the acrylic pores, it's so heavy that sometimes a canvas will sag if it's a big, big canvas. Whereas the, um, and let, well, okay, it depends on what tooth of the canvas and it has other factors, but the wood panels, you don't even have to worry about that, which is really nice. Um, Steve said, I know this isn't art related, but you have, but you have, you watched The Office. It's my absolute favorite show. I used to, I don't really watch TV anymore, but I used to watch it. That show is funny. Tomorrow said, enjoy your newsletter regarding how long a painting is taking you. Years to develop these techniques. I get asked that all the time. Yeah, it's a really common question. It was funny. I was with my friend and we went to an art show and she's an artist, um, well, a hobby art. Like she's not working at that as her profession. Um, she's really good though. But anyway, she went up, this guy had made these gourds that were cut out. They were really expensive, rightfully so. You could tell the amount of work that went in them was crazy. But one of the first things she asked is, oh, how long do, you, do these take you? And I had to tell her after, I'm like, don't ask artists that because that automatically puts most of them a little bit on edge. Cause in you could tell it did with him too um because it's like they know that most people he doesn't know you're an artist so he doesn't know you're asking just like because you appreciate the time that goes into something like that he's thinking you're trying to figure out how much he makes per hour like don't don't ask people that she's like well that's not what i meant i said i know but he doesn't know you're an artist you know that that's something you do um so it was kind of funny but yeah if, if you don't know what tomorrow's talking about you should just be signed up for my email newsletter because i give tips that you don't get anywhere else on that um, link should be in the video description. Maybe. I don't know. I don't remember what I put in there, but, um, I tried to give tips and motivation in addition to like updates on what videos went up when the live stream was going to be and stuff. But we were talking about in that, um, email newsletter, one of the questions that you do not need to answer that people will ask you, but buyers, and this is talking about buyers, not other artists, because other artists ask for different reasons, but where buyers are like, how long did that take you? You don't have to answer that. Or you don't have to give them the full thing. Like, don't tell them how many hours it took you to do something because most buyers, what they're doing is sitting there figuring out, oh, so you made $50 an hour if it took you this many hours and this is how much you're selling it for. And they're trying to figure out that and it's like they devalue your work. And the thing is, one, it's none of their business. Um, it really isn't any more than what your bank account uh, balance is. But, you, and you don't have to lie and you don't have to get, you know, huffy with them. I wouldn't be like, I'm not telling you that. It's none of your business. But you can answer instead like, well, I spent several weeks on it. I spent this many months because most of us are working on either multiple things at once or it takes a long time, you know, over weeks. I give them that information. Don't give them the hours it takes. Otherwise, they're trying to figure out and almost devalue what you're charging. Like, it's not really worth that. You're, you've got to remember, people are not paying for, and this was all written out in a much more cohesive way in the newsletter. See, you should be signed up for the newsletter. Um, but it... It's, um, they're not paying you per hour. You're not an hourly employee. They're paying for your vision. They're paying for a lifetime of practice. They're paying for your ideas and the concept. They're not paying you per hour. That is not what we do as artists. So you don't need to answer. And that's not something you should answer when people ask you, how long did this take you? 
I mean, you need to let, let's say you have a client, you're taking a commission. They need to know how long it's going to take you to finish something, but not by hours. It's going to take, you know, it'll take me three weeks before I can ship this or whatever. Let them know that. But you don't need to break it down by hours. You're not an hourly employee when you're an artist. But yeah, there was much more information on that in the newsletter. Um, oops, then that scroll too far. Oh, Ursi said, how can we get your newsletter? It should be in the video description. If it's not, go to my website, lawcree.com. On the front page, if you scroll down a bit, there's a place where you can sign up for it. It's free. Uh, Serving Artist Collective said, for palette, masters and palettes are frightfully expensive in my country. Oh, that sucks. So I use blank photo frame with glass in place, put a whole thing into the Tupperware box to store much cheaper. Hey, that works. If it works, go for it. That's awesome. A lot of people will use the glass from picture frames. With me, I have a tendency to cut myself on everything, everything. So with this one, it was slightly rounded along the edges and it's got these little like tabs on the corners. So I felt like I'd be way less likely to cut myself. Um, but yeah, I know of a lot of artists who use the glass from a picture frame. That would work. Just be careful because you know, glass. Um, let's see, but that's a good idea. Joan said, I have Golden's open acrylic paint. If you do not use water with them, they stay open much longer than the traditional acrylic paint. Golden's open acts more like an oil paint. See, and I don't think I'd like that. That's what I like about acrylics. I like that they dry right away and I can go over them with the next um, layer. So I have some golden, or I don't know if it's golden. So I've got some open paints that I need to try here that one of my students years ago gave me to test out. It's like blue and black. I don't know if there was white. Enough that I can, you know, give them a test. I just haven't gotten to them. They're still sitting in my desk. I really need to try those one of these days. Or not my desk, my art storage thing. See, now we're starting to get a bit more form. And these are probably, I would say, only halfway done, even at this stage. They have a lot more, um, a lot more with layering that I need to do, do as I continue going here. Just layer on top of layer on top of layer until it looks how you want. Don't, a lot of people make the mistake when it comes to acrylic painting. Oh, we're almost, let's turn the camera off. A lot of people make the mistake when it comes to acrylic painting that you just put the right color in the right place. Ta-da, done. No, because it's not a paint by number. If you're trying to make something look very realistic, you're going to layer on top of layer on top of layer. Now, a lot of people will also watch the Bob Ross style of painting and think that that's how it goes. You know, you just put the right color in the right place because he kind of does that too. It's the a la prima, all, you know, there's not a, t there's layering, but not to this extent. It's a different, different. Um, it's all wet into wet. And so that gives you a very different look than what I'm going for here. It's not that there's anything wrong with that, but it is a different look. When you're trying to do this, just keep layering on top of layer, on top of layer. If you're having, like you do one layer, your base layers, somebody said, I think last week that, or they may, maybe it was a comment left in one of the videos that they had, they were glad to hear that because they felt like if they weren't just putting the right color in the right place, like the first time, first brush stroke, if that brush stroke wasn't right, that they did it wrong. Well, no, you're just going to keep layering until it looks right. Um, oops. Thank you, Tamara. She says, I'm the bomb diggity. Oh my gosh. Thanks for sharing your art with us. Thank you so much, Tamara. Um, pull up those questions. But yeah, don't, you know, you're going to layer. Lots of layers. Um, and that's how it should look. That's going to give you a really, really good look. Um, let's see. Got a few more questions I can answer. Uh, Steve Anthony said, oh, that scroll too far. Ah, come back. Says, if you could only use one medium for the rest of your life, what would it be? Acrylics with the airbrush. And I say with the airbrush because I consider it all, like, that. I'm not going to do acrylics without airbrush. But that would probably be my, um, if I could only choose one. I wouldn't want to only choose one. I love too many different mediums. I just really enjoy working in lots of them. I get excited when I get to try something different. But, yeah, it's... Um, uh, probably acrylics are my favorite. I can just, I just feel like I can do anything out, like any vision I have, I can ha do on these. And the nice thing with acrylics, I love colored pencil, but colored pencil, because they're so slow to work on unless you're using powder blender or, well, I don't know, that does change it a lot with using both powder blender or using um, pan pastels with them. But they're, they're very slow. So you're not going to do these huge, huge paintings. If I want to do a huge painting, acrylics or oils are going to be the easiest way to go. But acrylics, because they dry so fast and go on to the next layer right away. And because I'm so impatient, that is wonderful. And I can make acrylics look just like an oil. Um, so for me, that would be, if I, if I had to choose one, it would be that. But luckily I don't have to choose. Art of Raven D says, I mostly tell people, I don't know. It depends. I'm talking about the, how many hours she spends. I don't know. It depends on the piece. If they ask me how long it takes, majority of the time, I don't know. 
I'm way too absorbed in creating to care about time. And you know that answer, that truthful answer, answer is good. And one of the things that I talked about in the newsletter, I don't want you guys to lie to people. I don't think anyone should lie to anybody. But unless somebody asks if something ugly looks good on them. Yes, it looks wonderful. Right? Just because I wanted people to feel good, even though yoga pants aren't pants. But anyway, whole other rant. Um, but I mean, you don't need to lie to the customer, but you can't. You don't have to give them all the information. I mean, you, you can safely say like what you said there. I don't know. I don't pay attention. I don't keep track of it. Most artists I don't think do. Um, I tell you guys how long things took me because I'm teaching you. And I think that that's very helpful for you guys to know how much time really goes into something. But yeah, having an answer like that, I think is a really good way to go. If I, I don't know. I don't keep track of that. Most people wouldn't. So that's a really good way. Um, Mara Black said, sorry for my typos. I think I'm overtired. Oh, did I miss something? I think I missed something from you tomorrow or not tomorrow. Um, Mara, I'm sorry. Oh, and it keeps scrolling too fast. Um, Joseph said, if you could only choose one medium, the medium to choose is art supplies. <laughs> if it's a deserted island, art supplies and a boat. Good answer. Um, Renny says, I was thinking about adding some paper clay sculpting to a painting. Not sure how it will work. Have you ever done something like this? Added feathers, beads, etc., to one of yours. I have not. I mean, make sure that the paper, the, the clay, all that, the, you know, pH neutral, all that, so it's going to last for a while. But I've seen where people did stuff like that or with modeling paste on the canvas. The closest that I've come with mixed media like that was, was gluing sheet music to half the, can, you know, part of the canvas. And then I took a, um, I used Mod Podge to glue it. And then I used a, like a modeling paste by Liquitex to kind of, um, it wasn't modeling paste. It was called something else, a texture medium. I don't know. I'm going to draw it over there somewhere, but I use that with a palette knife just to seal off where the, the paper met the canvas where I knew I would be using a lot of water with my acrylics and I didn't want that to mess up the paper. So they, cause they don't always play nice. So I sealed it with that and that worked really well, but I don't know with like anything else you'd have to make sure when you put anything with canvas, if it's going to have a, a weight to it, um, which the clay is going to, you need a canvas with a super heavy tooth. So like the, um, not the, the Frederick's Dixie canvases or their, I'm trying to think they have the Dixie and then another one, but the heavier, heavyweight canvas like that with a heavy tooth so that not only does the clay have something to grip to, but the canvas isn't going to be likely to sag like this canvas on the Belgian linen. If I put something heavy on it, it's going to sag over time because it's fabric. It's going to stretch the same thing with like my blue label canvas. So you know, you need to make sure you're choosing the right canvas for that, but I really don't have much more in advice for you besides that. Sorry. Um, Rebecca said, you're the reason I bought an airbrush. I like it, but the paint goes everywhere. Yeah, that takes some getting used to. It'll take some practice. Airbrush is definitely not an overnight thing. The only thing that you'll be able to do right away with the airbrush is a blurry out of focus background. That's easy, but the rest of it, that's going to take some practice for sure. Learning that control. Um, when I first started with airbrush, I did a lot with frisket. I frisket used frisket on everything. Now I don't use it that much, but I mean, I used it on everything because I just didn't have the control. That paint was going all over the place. Um, let's see. That does get easier with time though. Or practice. I should say practice more than time. Time isn't going to do anything for you. Practice is what will make it easier. Uh, Chelsea said you have a process for prepping a stretch canvas for oil paint when you aren't doing wet onto wet. Either way, my only thing is to make sure that the canvas has, oh, you mean with the paint. Okay, so I make sure first off it's a gesso canvas. All my canvases come pre-gessoed, so that's step one. For other than that, I use a, a graphite pencil generally to draw everything out that I want to do. I don't do a lot as far as toning the canvas. I just start painting, but sometimes I do paint, do the Grizel method where it's like the two-tone, the gray scale or, or with like a sepia tone and white and then glaze on top of it. But I don't typically do like the grounds or any of that with my oils. Um, not that it's wrong. I just don't. I don't feel like it helped me at all. If I thought it helped, I would do it. But for me, I, I never found that to be helpful. So now I just jump right in, you know, draw it and, and start painting. Um, let's see. Okay, we are 10.03. And yeah, I guess we, we are done for the night. So thanks for joining this. I'll post the photo to this part of the coral once it's done. And it'll make more sense to you because eventually I'll put fish areas and some cleaner shrimp right now it's going to look even when it's done i think it'll look more like weird flowers then it's going to look you're not going to associate it i think with being coral or polyps or, or anything else that i'm putting on there until it's all together i think that most people are going to see that when just that's done and it'll look like flowers but once the fish and everything are there it'll all, all come together and make sense 
Sarah said, I'm guessing if another artist asks how long it took you to paint something, they're trying to figure out what they could be getting themselves into if they try something similar. Yeah, and I have no problem answering an artist how long something would take to paint because they're asking for a very different reason than a buyer is asking. A buyer who does not paint is, again, they're trying to figure out like, oh, you're charging $1,200 and you only put 10 hours of work into that? Okay, well, first off, no, I put 20 years of experience in learning how to do that. Like, it's, it's kind of funny how people, anyway. Um, yeah, so, yeah, but answering artists, I have no problem um, giving them there. Oh, and because I'm terrible and forgot to remind you guys, make sure to thank our moderators. We've got Joseph Fincham, Valerie, and Nick. They all have their channels here listed in the video description. They've got channels on YouTube, so make sure to check that out. Thank them. They help me so, so much. And they help me here and in the art group over on Facebook, which you can join. That link should be in the video description as well um, if you want to post your work for everybody to see. Um, yeah, that's it. I will see you guys next week. Oh, wait, no, not next week. No live stream next week. My husband's on vacation and we are going. I have to go get photos for Patreon. So no live stream next week. Um, I will see you hopefully the following week. I don't know what dates are right now, so I don't even know what date that falls on with all the holidays. It messes everything up with everything. So anyway, I will see you guys soon. <laughs> Bye.